to the history of bad ideas episode number 537 i'm jason i'm jeff like i'm jim and i'm brian hey we're all here yay we're gonna be house that's right and it's gonna be a fuller house uh because the gimp is gonna be let out of his box soon gimp nick we're gonna gonna let him out of his box Uh, he's sleeping right now but uh, i think we i thought we lost the keys to the lock we did that's why it's taking a little bit longer for nick the gimp to get here so but he'll be here He'll be here. He supposedly has some good food to try from Bucky's. So mm. get ready. That's it, an oxymoron. Is it right. going to be as good as some of these peeps that we have to eat today? Oh yeah, and some drinks from Rocket Fizz. That's uh, that's only if we unzip his mouthpiece for his mask. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Right. Take out the ball gag. That's right. Give him a peep gag. <laughs> Wow. Now, I've been looking at these blue raspberry uh, icy flavored peeps that we've had, and we haven't opened them up yet. They've been here. I know. Those kind of look good. They do look good. So we're eating these today. Yeah. 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 Yes. I know better. I don't care if you don't want them. I'm going to open these. (laughs) Probably have at least four. (laughs) Uh, He has a doctor's note saying he does not have to eat anything this week. That's right. So we're just happy Blake's here. So I mean, they make those peeps look good. I'm not going to lie. That they do look good. Blue raspberry looks oh good. Oh, my God. You're killing it but with I the pen. I know better. I know better. Oh, God. I know Brian better. does not have a doctor's note, so he has to try them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nope. Easter's over. Jesus, is, he woke up. <laughs> he woke up. <laughs> I think we have a title for the show. Jesus, he woke up. <laughs> <sighs> Come on. So if you're just joining us and just found out about us from the Super uh, Cincy Expo, thanks for listening. Yes. And I hope we didn't offend you in the first five seconds. Uh, but yeah, welcome, everybody. Yeah, so uh, there's like a big event you guys did this weekend. What was that called again? Super Cincy Expo, Expo the first ever. And it was I, a video game tournament. I want, to, I want to acknowledge the fact that you let me know mm-hmm. that the Browns have won the Super Bowl. The Browns won the, the Browns. Tecmo Super Bowl. Tecmo Super Bowl. Super Bowl. <laughs> yep. Yes. They, they yes. Did. We had, I did celebrate, and I called Dr. Bednar, and we got <laughs> drunk over the phone with each other. I We did. We had a Tecmo Super Bowl tournament on Sunday, so thanks, everybody, for participating. Uh, double elimination. Uh, Gregor. Uh, Gregorius. 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 Congratulations, Gregorius. He won. Uh, he was a big fan. He had yes. a Green Bay jersey on, a Green Bay uh, a cheese, cheese head. head. And uh, he came He came ready to win. Yes. Um, and he said he was in a league, so that kind of helped. Uh, but, yeah, he won with the Browns over his own team, the Packers. Um, yeah, that's a true player right there. Yeah. Uh, so the tournament was if you, flipped a, you flip a coin, the person gets to pick – the two teams, and then the other person gets to pick the team, the picks who they want. So uh, he picked Green Bay and the Browns on purpose, and then the other guys like, oh, I gotta go with Green Bay just to spite you. I think. Oh, <laughs> bad move! Green Bay was bad that year. Uh, the that Magic Man. At one point, the Magic Man was uh, taken out of the game, so it was a rough one. Yeah, they had Sterling, Sterling Sharp though, didn't he? What's that? Didn't they still have Sterling? Yeah, Sterling, Sterling Sharp. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, and I forget who else they had. Um, that was decent. QB Browns. QB Browns who <laughs> yeah. led them to the championship. Um, Keith Woodside was a running back. He had a good game. And yeah, Michael yeah. Haddix was the uh, five uh, rushes fullback. for 44 yards. He did have five rushes for four. He how had did, another rush, yeah. but then he fumbled it, remember, on the 20? Yeah. How, did, how did Metcalf do? Uh, Metcalf was okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Not good. Kevin Mack is the, is the beast, though. Yeah. Um, the one guy kept winning in the first couple rounds yeah. because uh, they kept giving him uh, they, the teams or the opponents kept picking the Raiders uh, and somebody else. And he's like, well, I'll just take the Raiders. Second yeah. round. Well, I'll ta- uh, it's going to be so and so in the Raiders. And he's like, well, I get to pick first. Right. Yeah. I'll take the Raiders again. 
Uh, it's like, well, yeah, he's got Bo Jackson. He and run, Marcus did, Allen. Did he run for 300 yards for a touchdown? Yeah, his quarterback. And one touchdown just, <laughs> just to spite everybody? His quarterback for the Raiders was one for four for 50 yards, two interceptions. <laughs> And then Jackson had 244 yards. Uh, you know, I would have. The loved, next game he didn't throw. Uh, he did not throw the second game. That's awesome. I would have loved if you guys kept like uh, top performing stats. For, we like, almost the, did, but it was a lot of work. Computer. Yeah, that would have required a lot of work. Now, from what I saw and I remember, I would have picked the MVP of the tournament mm -hmm. as Andre Reed. Andre Ooh, Reed did have a lot of jumping. The Bills played at least four games. They did. And oh. Andre Reed was the. He kept jumping and catching. He was. Miraculous catch. He was. <laughs> on on screen two, Andre Reed was kind of quiet. Really? Yes. Jim ha Jim was the announcer for screen one. I was the announcer for screen two. By I was screen around. two. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. And Brad was the sideline reporter from Old Man Brad. And then Doug chimed in once in a while. And then J or Brian was giving us uh, advice from the side. Like he was yes. giving us info. Yes. Uh, usually every time I messed up. Brian was a spotter. Yes. yes. Uh, grammatical yes. spotter for Jason. I didn't his, screw up that often, did his, I? And his brain impact. You're the, the statistician man, and they were the colored, colored. Yeah. You guys were the colored, yeah. color color commentary. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun, though. Um, yeah, we had two screens going. It was a lot of fun. The day before that, but did it, but anybody do the 300 yard Bo Jackson touchdown run? No, no. shits and giggles. No. no, they were serious. They weren't fucking around. No, um, I tried it a little bit in practice. Yeah, and I. It was always when I got to the goal line, I was making the transition to go back where I'd get tackled. Um, there, we learned that special teams is not really that special in that game. Uh, <laughs> if you got it past the 15-yard line, it was a miracle. Um, there was a lot of 15, On 20 yards. kick returns? Yeah. Well, it's... On my screen, at least. There are... That's for the player's safety. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, why Why did everybody keep trying to return these kicks? You have to return them. There, There's is, no there are no touchbacks in Tech Mobile. Didn't we see? A didn't somebody run one out of uh, the? The, t the only touchback is if you kick it out of the end zone on a punt. Yeah, somebody intercepted, ran it out to the three, got tackled, and started on the. 20. That is true. <laughs> there is uh, that did happen. A glitch. Yeah, that was a glitch. Then. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the guys whole, like that whole contest is now under uh, review <laughs> petition. Yep. Um. And and really serious news. These peeps are delightful. Blueberry ice, blue raspberry. Blue raspberry icy, and they, the the thing I like about them is they're blue in the middle, so the flavors the marshmallow, in the marshmallow is blue. The flavors in the marshmallow, not in the sugar on the front, on top. Brian, is that a tolerable peep, or do you hate it? I, at this point, you guys don't care. I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> well, we care. He asked. We're curious if there it was, was a tolerable. It didn't make me gag. If you had to eat a peep, would that be one of them you ate? If there were six peeps laid out, this being one of them, would you? and you had to eat one for your life, would you go for the blue raspberry, or is there another one you actually liked better that we've tried? No. <laughs> can I, can Brian, I Brian's, Brian's choosing to die. Yes. <laughs> can I sniff what a peep? What are the stipulations? Like, <laughs> if, like, if I don't eat one, do, do I die? Yes. You get uh, shot in the head if you don't eat one. No, no. I, I think he's okay with that. If you don't eat one, then a puppy dies. <gasps> yeah. I'll, oh. I'll, I'll choose the peep every time in that scenario. <laughs> Did it bite somebody, though? Shut up. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> I got they your back here, good. Brian. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Jason wants to kill puppies, though. <laughs> Blake's at least enjoying the smell of them. smell good. Did you know, at the Super Cincy Expo, we played a lot of Family Feud and Jeopardy up on the main stage. There was a lot of Sylvester Stallone questions this week. You mean Sly Vester? Sly Vester. Yeah, we had a ton of Sly Vester Stallone uh, there uh, was, questions. There was. Did you know he was a wrestler? <laughs> uh, he is. So we uh, played uh, we played uh, Family Feud uh, during the um, cosplay competition, and we gave away a lot of fantastic prizes. Yes, we did, and uh, we We're did. We're gonna have to re up before October. The first question was old school wrestlers name an old school wrestler. Um, nobody was above twenty two, and uh, yeah, you got to read go the well. room. Did not go well. Got to know your audience. Uh, in fact, nobody events. got anything. Uh, Rocky Balboa was mentioned. Yep, uh, John Cena. Uh, so at least that was a wrestler. Um, I get yeah, so. To what about those, Hogan Hawk? I heard he yeah, was there. Hogan, Hogan Hawk was there. Hogan Hawk was there. Yeah, I mean, to those children, yes, John Cena is an old school. Wrestler. He is old school. That's it, true. Yes. Uh, he was not on there. So 
Um, Jeff, give me an old school wrestler you think would be up there. Andre the Giant. That is correct. <clears throat> Blake. Iron Sheik. Nope. He was a question, though, in Jeopardy. Uh, anyone else? Uh, how about... Hulk Hogan is up there. Yes. Hogan Hulk? Hogan Hulk. How about uh, the Million Dollar Man? No. Junkyard Dog? Nope. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? Nope. The Ultimate Warrior? There you go. Uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka? No. He's Coco a... Beware? Nope. Sergeant Slaughter? No. Hacksaw Jim Duggan? So- oh, Bret Hart? Maybe I just am. Roddy Piper? Yeah, Sean, Rowdy, Rowdy Sean Piper. Michaels. Yeah. Have said Rowdy Piper. Macho Man Randy Savage. I forgot. I thought of Macho Ooh, Man, yeah. then forgot to say him. Yep. So, there you go. Yeah. Speaking no, none of the honor, people on the stage even know who any of those people are. <laughs> in honor of Macho Man Randy Savage. Mm-hmm. Hello, Jeff, this week. Yes. Slim Jims. <gasps> Ooh. And other sorts of uh, jerky. Yeah, dried meats or, or mm-hmm. packaged uh, meats. Oh, it's at least packaged. Yeah. That's good. Meats that don't need refrigeration. That's good. That's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Peep cereal. Same face I made when I heard about it. <laughs> it does not look good. It does not look good. So what was your favorite thing we gave away during this uh, expo? <laughs> Vampire's kiss <laughs> from the Nicolas Cage bag of suck. You uh, gave away about awesome. half a dozen of those. Yes. yes. My yes. favorite would be the map of Dolly World. Oh, that's right. yeah, Dolly, the Dollywood map. It was was not something I knew was even in that bag. I did not either. And those um, girls loved it. Yes, <laughs> we were um, just there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very helpful uh, seven days ago. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think the fa- my favorite thing that uh, I I witnessed being given away was Brad giving away a Cinema Guys T shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that, that was very funny. Um, it did have his face on it. At the Dowson itching powder. <laughs> uh, we did have a lot of fun, though. So we appreciate everybody that came out that said hi to us, that thanked us. Uh, thank you for coming out. We did uh, three fantastic panels. We did. Yeah. Uh, Dan Molina from Dragon's Lair. Mm-hmm. He was very interesting to talk to. He was a really good. He a really good storyteller. Yes. Uh, we had Princess Peach and Bowser, the voices of them. Uh, Brad did that one on Saturday at noon. What was one of the Molina Brad. stories that everybody liked? Uh, what was it, Don Blue's house that got broken into? Yes, uh, he first got he first got into the business. He, pretty much, he was which which business? The voice character business? No, he was he was the mostly editing. in sound editing. Sound editing. Right. So he was doing a bunch of the sound, and he got he got a friend said, "Hey, come here. I have this guy working on this project," and it was they went to Don Blue's house. And he said there was just one room was for the animators. One room was for the set, like sound. Well, the kitchen was like the dark room. Like he had his own bedroom, which was off the limits. But everything else, like just people were in and out all the time. And it was busy. But it got broken into and stuff got stolen three times. Like everything. Except for hanging on the wall, there was a cell. A couple cells he had from the original Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, uh, the scene Disney. where he's... Yeah, yeah. Over, like over, over the cliff. Yeah. And... The, the most valuable object they left on the wall because they didn't know what they were stealing. Correct. That, that itself was worth, <laughs> at that time, and this was like the early 80s, yeah. like $150,000. <laughs> and they left it. <laughs> it was worth more than the house. All right. Let's get that 8-track player <laughs> for mixing. <laughs> this is a beta player? Beta Max? <laughs> There's a laser disc. <laughs> it is Wizard of Oz. Why? Because that's the only movie they have. <laughs> that's good, though. I like that. Um, yeah. He was really good. Yes. And then you... Uh, I did see, Steve yeah, Palmer. I had Steve Palmer, uh, who was uh, Bill Williamson in Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. He was fantastic. Super um, nice guy. Super nice guy. They were all super nice, I should oh, say yeah. that. Um, but yeah, he was great with storytells. I will say he's a lot taller than I thought. Like he, Brian and I went to go walk him up to the main stage, and he stood up, and I think I just kind of stared at him for a second like, whoa, hello. <laughs> uh, but he was, he was fantastic. That he got his acting career start in Cincinnati was a great story. Yep, at uh, Shadowbox Cabaret down on Newport on the Levee. I remember that. 2001. Yeah. I did... Uh, uh, follow him on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
was at the end on Sunday when I got home. I was just kind of scrolling through. He went live a few times on Instagram, mm-hmm. went down to where he used to live in Covington. Yep. <laughs> uh, was just kind of talking about that. He, he was, was on the zoo, too, I he think. He went to the zoo yeah. and was like, you know, a bunch of different exhibits and was going live and stuff. It was... It was fun. He's he's a super nice guy. Yeah, and I I really appreciate like the the guests that come um, and just kind of walk around the city and embrace the experience. It's really nice to see. Um, or so. when the guests come for the same weekend as Oktoberfest and they are openly hungover when they <laughs> see them the next morning. Anyways, moving on. Um, <laughs> I think then, we're looking at one of the guys' pictures he's staring right at me, <laughs> Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no, Blake would have to show up. The other guy. Oh, Aww. Jake Lloyd. <laughs> Are you an angel? And then finally, we did have a great time on Saturday with the track and field Nintendo Power Pad. Yeah, Chad. Congratulations, Chad. Chad, congratulations. Yay. I saw that oh. on your news feed. Oh, hold on. I, I need to switch. Go find the applause button. Oh, wait. That's not laughing. We're not Cheer laughing button. at you, Chad. I promise. There it is. We're clapping. That, that was DJ Fat Fingers hitting the wrong button. I, but, I did see online. You, it was the pad. It was the foot pad. Yeah. Yep. So... You didn't do the old keyboard where people can bring their own nope. uh, combs or pencils or pens nope. to cheat? Nope. You had to do it. Uh, you had to use the run in place in that. Mm-hmm. And it was hilarious. Uh, seeing them do the hurdles, the 100 uh, meter dash. The triple jump was fun. Yep. Um, Chad won it all, but uh, off off the, off the tournament, uh, Dr. Dana beat Chad. She, she did. did. Yeah, she, she did. did. Um, but yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. So congratulations, Chad. We'll be back next year for it. Uh, we'll have a couple different tournaments in that. Um, it was our first year doing it. And I think it went pretty smooth for overall. Yeah. Um, so uh, we had a lot of compliments on everything. So yeah. we appreciate that. I want to thank uh, Andrew and the crew yes. running it. That was, that was yep. a fun event to be, be, be part of. Yep. yep. So you got to scope out the Sharonville uh, Convention Center, Sans Guns and Knives, Mm-hmm. In preparation for next year's Comic Expo, not oh, next year, this year's this October. Year, I what I mean, the next one. Yeah, yeah. This year. Oh, no, there were still seventeen tables of guns and knives. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they were foam. always there. Oh, that's they were foam. <laughs> we, we, moved, we moved them outside, and we're encouraging oh. people to buy them on their way in. <laughs> Frank was always no, no, there, he just selling to buy guns on the way out, <laughs> no, not we, on the we way were in. Encouraging them to use them for their cosplay. You know? Oh, okay, okay, good. You I know what? The Tecmo players shiving each other. <laughs> I asked every single one of them if they were Bill Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it was a little, it was a little uh, sketchy because you couldn't tell a real katana from a fake one because there was all foam <laughs> katanas there. Uh, yeah. I mean, there were two booths there that were selling swords. Yes, yeah. they were. Yes, and, they were. And, and then there was a panel on that we didn't run, but they were up there talking about cosplay and how mm-hmm. to get into cosplay and what it takes to be successful. And- Jeff was one of the models. Princess Leia Ray turned the Jedi outfit. He was not. No, the Ewok one, Endor no. one. No, no, no. It was it was Return of the Jedi Princess Leia, but I was Jabba the Hutt that Princess Leia was chained to. Oh, okay, <laughs> you didn't I get gotcha. that. I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you look great, though. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. So we appreciate everything. Yeah. Uh, Scab Randall, fully uh, f- uh, we docked. full attendance from. Uh, Two of the three tri Canadians of the year. Scab Randall, Dr. Dana, and yep. um, uh, Doug was there too. But yeah, yeah. Man, Doug. Yeah. The jewel of the licking. Yes, he is was, the jewel was of the licking. There. But Ms. Yeah. Marbles was not there. No. She was not. She might be there at Cincinnati Comic Expo, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. You know why? Guess who's coming? Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Oh. He'll be there October 18th. I need a sound effect for Chuck Norris. That's not it. That's not it. No. Nope. Gotta be something like. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Oh. Yeah. I think you just pressed that. I was trying to get it to stop. Apparently, it doesn't <laughs> stop when you press it the second time. When he comes out on the main panel when Jim's interviewing him, that should be the music. That that's, was a, that that's was the better closest one. for Chuck Norris. Yeah, I like that one. That's the one. So, yeah. So, there you go. I have Look. to come up with some good questions. Yes. Uh, they uh, should all probably just be about karate. No, yes. there has to be at least one. About the total gym, About 2,000. Total gym. Yes. <laughs> 1, We're going thousand percent. Put, the, our idea was put one on the stage. Mm-hmm. So he has to try it. You know, I don't did, think any of them work anymore. Did they work to begin with? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they the, worked. They the worked. one on the commercial. Oh, was a pulley on a... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, all the clothes that are piled on top of them, it's hard to work them. Oh. <laughs> 
was the name of it before it became Total Gym? All it is is a pulley. <laughs> It didn't sell well. <laughs> so they're like, how do we market this? Can we get Hulk Hogan involved? Nah, he's got that pasta thing. He's got the juicer. <laughs> no, it was pastaroni or whatever it is. He had a juicer, too. He did? Yeah. Wow. Well, his story was that he, he had a chance to get the uh, George Foreman, Foreman, which was a complete lie. Wait. It was always made for Foreman. Brian, Hulk Hogan lies? And then he chose a juicer instead. I don't know, brother. Hogan Hulk would never lie, well, but Hulk Hogan, Hogan would. He didn't turn him down. He just wasn't at home when the call came in. Yeah. Bullshit. So then they called George after him. Yeah. George just happened to be home and answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's when opportunity knocks. When you're at home alone and the phone rings. It. You know, if only they could confirm this with the creator. Oh, they did. Okay. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so if you just stay at home and hope someone calls you, you'll eventually have good luck. You'll eventually get your very own small kitchen you, uh, you or appliance. Uh, according to Hulk Hogan, he's the one that brought Simon Cowell over to America because of the WrestleMania album. And uh, Simon Cowell said, no, that's not true. <laughs> that guy's like, I've really never met him. <laughs> But according to Hulk Hogan, Hogan about a year ago, he said that was the reason Simon Cowell came over here. Oh, yeah. Hogan, brother. you have to lie about dead people, not live people that you can go to. Yeah, we, yeah, we can fact check <laughs> and, and, a lot and, of this. And have sex with my wife. Oh, wait. Hold Where's on. Bubba at? <laughs> you know, Chuck, oh, Chuck used to sell his own uh, uh, line of jeans. I wonder if he's still doing it that you can do karate kicks in. <laughs> It really? Actually, yeah, seriously. Like in the eighties, I remember these pair of jeans. What were they called? Let's see if I can find them. I here. can't remember, but they they had uh, the, like an extra patch in the crotch so you can do uh, <laughs> side kicks. There's, you know, because jeans are tight, you can't do good karate kicks no. in jeans. But he had a special uh, line of jeans that had some extra space in the crotch. It's kind of weird. So you can do your side kicks. Were it's they just weird. the Brett Favre Wranglers? No. Uh. <laughs> Chuck yeah. Norris action jeans. There you go, man. Wow. Can you buy those still? That's what I'm searching for. <laughs> yes, Probably on cut. eBay. If you, you know can what? find some, you can cheap. find some, buy some, so you have them, autograph them, and wear them during the same time, <laughs> and do kicks when he comes on stage. Wear them, make him sign the crotch, <laughs> yeah. and then demonstrate. That's right. The moves in them. <laughs> and then <laughs> cancel him for assault. <laughs> he I mean, touched me down there. You made him sign your crotch. <laughs> I mean, if he's made it this far, he's probably that's probably not going to do it for him. <laughs> I'm assuming they're just, what, denim-looking Zumba pants, right? <laughs> is there such a thing? Yes. Why not? There is. There are really? stretchy denim-like leggings. Nice. Yeah, but then, no, the, these nice. were real jeans. These weren't stretchy leggings. Yeah, these were made for real. <laughs> these men. were made for real men who could do side real kicks. Men. That's right. It, it's real like, karate it's like, men. It, it, it's like I would get up and show you, Jason, and demonstrate. Mm-hmm. But, but you, know, you don't have but, them. But you, but you know how the the jeans on the inseams come up into one. Yeah, you, yes, you don't have an extra. Patch this actually on has your like a di- it has an extra diamond uh, patch space. In, in there, so you can do your side. Do you think he sold a lot of them uh, like in the a, valley? Like a pair of no. geek pants. No. It's too hot in the valley for th- for karate <laughs> denim. I think those are the type <laughs> those of are, those uh, are geese pants they sell on uh, <laughs> uh, Duluth Trading Company. It could be they advertise they've got the diamond pattern in the crotch. That, to give you, you know more. what? That's probably where all the excess uh, stock uh, and supply went to. <laughs> when this is Chuck a lot North of crotch selling them. Yeah. Welcome to Crotch Talk on the OB Chuck, Network. Chuck Norris Crotch Talk. <laughs> Nonetheless. Get it straight, Jason. My bad. There are no action jeans available to purchase on uh, Amazon right now, but there is a metal advertising sign. Oh, my gosh. How much? Uh, what, what does it say first? It's just a picture of the advertisement. Oh. It, it, In action jeans? Action jeans. They were made by Century. Okay. The company that made the boxing equipment. Okay. Oh, so that's got to oh. be good quality. I was going to say the company that, oh, do I see coming in through the door? It, I think I think the, the gimp finally got out of the box. Does he have his zipper mask on? Oh, it has been removed. Oh, oh God. Put it back on. Put it back on. <laughs> hey, it's raining out there. It is raining. Oh. <laughs> is it raining, man? Hallelujah. It's raining, man. I don't have that on the... Uh, Oh, thing programmed in. We, so. don't, we don't own the rights to that. We, we had to, just format it. We anyways. had to let the gimp out of the box a week early, so he's ready for golf season starting next week. Uh, speaking <laughs> of that, Jim's suspended next week. Uh, <laughs> 
goes into effect starting next week. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh man, that means that I get a I get the good chair for for a yeah, while. Yeah, you do. You know, it's easier Jeff, if you just buy one. With me, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you've been on the show for like four years. You could just buy one. Buy me a chair, Jason. I'm not buying. I didn't. Buy, no one else bought bought each other a chair. I don't care what anybody else if did. Anybody would like to buy Brian Brian a comfy office, office chair? chair. Please uh, send it to uh, Hobie. Yeah. We'll we'll give you Jason's address off air. Not one of Blake's awful chairs over there. I don't know how you're comfortable in that chair. These are awesome because you can spin around. Well, you can do that with I these. Too. <laughs> As we all spin around. I, I, it's not I a visual, visual folding chair. I can't <laughs> spin. All I can do is hit somebody yeah, with it. Yeah, you can take it and hit somebody <laughs> with it at least. Maybe that's why it's not comfortable. But Blake's the only one that squeaks when he spins. <laughs> that is true. Right. That is. I mean, to be that's fair. That's not the chair. <laughs> yeah, he said his stomach's not feeling the, the best. So Yeah, just be careful, stomach. Nick. <laughs> be careful over there. That, that, that's his hip running. or his his knee. <laughs> Nick, would you like some blue icy raspberry peeps? No, but I I did bring some uh, Bucky Streets to try out for us. For oh, guys give us to one go. to start, and then we'll move on from there. While we're doing this, did anybody watch anything this weekend? No, we were at a Cincy Comic Con. <laughs> I did. Well, I watched. Did. I watched Three Body Problem because uh, I didn't oh, have anything I, else. I, to I've do. heard good things. Uh, <laughs> all right, it starts off pretty cool. Then it kind of goes a little off rail. Then it goes sideways. I got disappointed. Like a true Benny and Weiss Game of Thrones. Say, Game of Thrones guys, right? Yeah. It starts out great. The middle goes okay. And then at the end, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so step Tell one was good. Step one was good. The middle, it gets a little goofy. And then I, and then it went off the concept that it, it, it teased you with it being. But it's still good if you want to watch it. Yeah, go ahead and watch it. I don't want to give anything away, but I, it does have some interesting concepts. Well, first of all, if you like science, don't watch it. <laughs> well, <laughs> there goes <laughs> Alabama. There you go. <laughs> well, They're not listening anyway. Our, our listener from Alabama just turned yeah. off again. Roll Tide. Yeah. Roll, oh, he's, he's back. back. <laughs> uh, so we're starting off with some uh, Bucky's 12 flavor gummy bears. The smell is overwhelming, but... They're pretty delicious gummy bears. They are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, somebody, is, somebody is skyrocketing. Just somebody is going for a floppy right now. Yeah, these are fantastic. These are fantastic. <laughs> Can't beat a you. good gummy. Just wait. That's just number one. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> three. He's, he's Ooh, man, that's mm. good. Nick. Would oh, you yeah. like uh, mac and cheese gummies? You know what they taste like? Peach. <laughs> They're not mac and cheese flavor. <laughs> that's I, like a, a complete ripoff. To I be spent fair, eight dollars on this. To be fair. It, and nowhere on the box does it say mac and cheese flavored. It, it's just a craft mac and cheese box. Fruity flavored, artificially flavored. How, how much mac and cheese it have says you ever fruity eaten? on there? Yeah. Oh, we're idiots for falling for it then. Oh, yeah. No, Jason's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, we're not the ones who bought it. <laughs> I yeah. know, my kids forced me. <laughs> yeah, blame it on your kids. I did get this, though. Teach your kids to read, and then we'd be all right. That's some great podcasting. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I was showing you. It's a shark. Uh... <laughs> Bottle opener. It's metal. It's oh, pretty, and then he hits me with it. Because everybody... This is made of metal. Smack. Why did you buy that? I don't know. I like it. <laughs> to open bottles with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Cool. What else you got over there, Nick? What else? We're moving right along? Yeah, go, moving right along. Well, I, thought I watched we were gonna, WrestleMania. I thought we were going to talk did. about some stuff before. We, we can... Get back to it. We have plenty yeah, we, of time. Yeah. Plenty of time. We've got three or four hours. No, we don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got at least two hours. Mm, what'd you so. get over there, Nick? You just told your horses over there, Mr. Okay, Brothers. okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I watched WrestleMania. Did you like it? I. It was probably the best WrestleMania uh, I've seen in my entire life. I predicted the Avengers Endgame ending. I was excited. Everybody came out to stop the bloodline from winning. Cody uh, Rhodes got the championship. <laughs> So it was very well done. I'm not confused. Uh, I predicted a couple months ago that uh, Cody Rhodes is going to win because everybody that the bloodline has wronged in the in the last year will come out to stop the bloodline from interfering, and they did. And it was, I was like, Jey Uso is going to come out. He did, which everybody figured. I figured John Cena would come out. Uh, he did. Um, then I'm trying to think who else came out. Undertaker came out to take care of The Rock. Which was supposed to be Stone Cold. Yeah, and Stone Cold was playing with his cat. Did you see that? Yeah, he was... Uh, <laughs> Poncho? Poncho, yeah. So he, they traveled back in time to get the stones to stop him? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 
Did they show Poncho? Not at WrestleMania. Uh, uh, I'm glad I didn't watch then. It was I, on. He was on uh, TikTok with Poncho. I I, I follow. I see him on Instagram on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it jump, jump. It will not. Uh, it I was a good Taylor, ending. Taylor Swift's boyfriend was there. No, no, no. Oh. Jason Kelsey. Oh, that, her oh. boyfriend's brother. Was yes, there. Her, her boyfriend-in-law. Yes, her boyfriend-in-law. <laughs> um, you know, the best part was Randy Orton <laughs> punting the YouTuber, who I don't know who the YouTuber is. Logan uh, Paul. Logan Paul. No, 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 no. It was one of his buddies. It's the one of the top guys next to Logan Paul. Jake Paul. No. Uh, and he was in a prime suit. Ron Paul and yes, it was Ron Paul. <laughs> Rand Paul. It was Rand Paul. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that guy gets the shit kicked out of him by other people. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess the guy went off script and kept barking at him. Adrian Paul. No. Yes. Yes. And Randy Orton punted him, and he went about ten feet in the air backwards. And they're like, "That was not uh, part of it." And then he picked him up on the table to do the RKO, but he looked at him and he was so pissed off he started barking at him. Randy Orton did, and then. Did the RKO and the rumor is that he might have a concussion <laughs> because Randy did not like that. <laughs> well, that's what they get. Hey, Randy, there's a YouTuber. Uh, n- enough said. I got it. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, quite possibly the the best WrestleMania ever. I wasn't a huge fan of the first night. Like it was still good, but the second night was fantastic. I mean, is it better than a WrestleMania where they tombstone pile drive Pete Rose? Which one? Any but, all of them? Do both. <laughs> That in itself, uh, yes, that that is a hard to beat event at WrestleMania. If it was a real tombstone, yes. If he were involved in a real buried alive match <laughs> <laughs> and lose, and never came back for another one, or subsequently like twelve more, did did they pile drive Shohei Tani's uh, former interpreter? They did not. <laughs> I didn't see that. Otani's perfectly innocent. He knows nothing. It's fine. Well, the big difference is Otani didn't piss the guys off that were making the bets. He's going to support this guy somehow. Yes. While Pete, on the other hand, had the guys had all the garbage on him that made the bets for him. He decided to throw those guys under the bus. So they're like, fuck you. That did not end well for him. No, it did not. Did not. Uh, so, yeah. So, so lesson learned is if you're going to do some illegal shit, have your, have your, friend, have your guys back that are you're, helping you out. Like he's like with the uh, Arizona basketball uh, scandal with Sean Miller, he he had Book Richardson served jail time. <laughs> oh, a legend! No, Book Richardson really served. <laughs> yeah, prison but Sean time. Miller did not know anything about it. Yes, exactly. Sure. All right, what's up next year? <laughs> I got don't want to know peach rings, but I don't. Is it Shamoy? I think it's Shamoy. Shamoy. Shamoy peach rings. Well, that, that's uh, some sort of like it, an Indian spice or something. It looks like a. I think it's Mexican. It looks yes. like a small uh, White Castle onion ring. That's exactly they, what it looks. Chicken I, ring. I've gotten this before. I've had them before. They're covered in buffalo powder. Oh, pretty much. Oh. They're, I, my first reaction was what Jason is reacting Mm-mm. to right now, but they grow on you. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. The, the uh, smell is not good well, to begin Well, with. when you've had a ball gag in your mouth 23 hours out of 24, <laughs> you know, these will taste better, won't they? Yeah. Oh! This is the actual flavor of his ball gag. <laughs> <laughs> it's got... Mm, Actually, that's nowhere near as bad as I was thinking. That's oh! Got, that's got yeah, because you have Jason over here going... Ugh, uh, uh. Although the more I'm eating, the spice is really... Spice is a little strong there. Really bad. Okay, they've got a little little bit of spice. A little bit of kick. Once you I get don't to, do hot things, and no, this is getting too hot. Once you get to the peach part, it's not bad. Like, it kind of does it better, but that first bite was awful. Oh. So, Jeff, you just licked all the stuff off. The good part, the sweet stuff's still there. Yeah, I know, but I couldn't leave it in my mouth or for <laughs> the time being. Jeff That's is what starting said. to sweat. <laughs> okay, somebody write down for the... Uh, I can't leave it in my mouth for the, episode, for the name for the title for the episode. <laughs> oh. If the next thing is hot, I'm not eating it. It's not hot. It's hot as you, Jeff. Not hot, not gummy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not good or it's not great. <laughs> it will make, make you masturbate. Ejaculate, Jason. Damn it. The show's right. I know. Well, I'm sorry. 
Uh, good news is uh, only one show got canceled this week. What was it? It wasn't Wibbly Wobbly. No, 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 that's, no, no, no. That's no. Good One Strong. That is like it's one of our best. That's thriving. Uh, F you, Billy McFarlane got uh, canceled. Canceled. Why? I Fuck forgot that was even on. Yeah, so did Mer- 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 everybody else. Yeah. Uh, Eli Baby Mama Drama just got uh, renewed for a second season, but uh, because they were thinking another baby will come along. More babies, more mamas. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, they're hoping to make it into a franchise, so that would be good. Um, so different people. Well, they're like all related like to like Eli a- somehow. Oh, I didn't know if maybe like they're going to do a spinoff, like a Tyreek Hill spinoff. Nick Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon, uh, Tyreek Hill would, but he's too busy beating up people. So you know, allegedly, allegedly, piece of shit. Anyways, moving on. You don't need Tyreek Hill in the show. We're doing. Oh, the, that's right. Just the, do the baby, the mama's. baby mama drama. He's fine. He's he, you know he's no longer cheating on. Her. So Brian, do you think we can get a show called like some like John and Kate, not quite eight, and not have the the Goslins on? But have our friends, John and Kate? I mean, at this point, I, I don't see why not. Mm-hmm. Network TV's kind of looking for anything right now. Uh, they just reached out to the Gimp about a reality show, and he spends 23 hours in a box. <laughs> so, I mean, might be the number one show on NBC. Who knows? Didn't they make a movie with Ryan Reynolds about that? Yes, they did. Uh, he was in Iraq, though, at that time. So, this is American based. So, America. So? so? Uh,. Speaking of WrestleMania, uh, real quick, we had a poll. This <laughs> Speaking week. of WrestleMania, six minutes ago, we had which WWE wrestler would carry the WWE into the next generation? Cody Rhodes, Damian Priest, who also won a title, LA Knight, or other? Amazing cash in for Priest. Yes. LA Knight won, uh, is at 0%, so nobody thinks that. Damian Priest at 4%. And other was uh, came in second at twenty two percent. The other suggestions were uh, Mantar from the nineteen eighties. Uh, that Hogan was Professor Number One suggesting Hogan that. Hulk uh, was in, uh, requested. That was Doug uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, also Doug, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cody Rhodes was first at seventy four percent. So there you uh, go. Yeah, was uh, what was it? What was Dunkasaurus? Was that or? Uh, Dunkaroo Doug? Dunkaroo Doug? I think he's going to. Dunkaroo Doug is out there. So, uh, titles for the show last week. Uh, Nick, how have you been? Good. Since the last time you were on a couple months ago. Wow. Look at that. Uh, did you uh, see any movies since then? No. Okay, great. <laughs> great job. He doesn't get any movies in the box. <laughs> He has a VCR, but no TV. <laughs> yeah, we gave him the VCR. Yes. <laughs> it's a sex toy. It goes in and out, in and out. Eject, eject, eject. Make sure you rewind. Make sure you rewind. Be kind. Oh, uh, anything else going on with you? No, just got back from vacation last week and stopped at Bucky's on the way home. Where did you go? Treats, went to Orlando. Did you see Disney? Disney we World. we experienced Disney for a day. Where, what park did you go to? Magic Kingdom. Okay. It okay. rained. Yes. There were lots of people. Yeah. None were of there, them followed there, your rule. Were there people pooping in line? Not that I saw. No. <laughs> did you? Get, we, had, we had a news story about yeah. that. Did you get anything free from fish? No. no. I don't think fish likes me because I gave him the nickname fish. <laughs> Did you reach out to fish? No. Oh, <laughs> you have called security. <laughs> <laughs> he knew better. <laughs> there, there wasn't a do let this person in sign. <laughs> I'm uh, not on that list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wh- how many rides did you go on? We went on everything we wanted to. We okay. did the uh, Magic Plus Traction, sorry. pass. No, they're rides. <laughs> Just like they're so you scheduled, you scheduled the time you wanted to go? Yeah, we like to schedule them, like, you're allowed to schedule another one every two hours, mm-hmm. so we schedule them all for the afternoon when the most people are going to be there, and, like, start stacking them on top of each other. Yep. Yeah. And then try and hit as much as we can in the morning before we get to that, so. What's your favorite ride on Magic Kingdom? Probably Tron. It's oh. pretty fun. It's short, but yeah. I heard it's really good. So, Tiana's ride was not open yet, right? No, it was not. Summer, I think, as they said, June or July. Um, it's the rumor. Either was Country Bear Jamboree close oh, to down. Shame. I They're redoing it all. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You hate that one? I hate that one. It's God, stupid. you are a communist. Sorry. So did I, you do Haunted Mansion? Yes, we did. Okay. D- do any of your kids, do any of your girls get scared? 
all like their mother. Okay. Your wife gets so scared? Are, do you know my well, wife? That's true, but <laughs> it's just, you know, holograms. I remember one time on vacation, uh-huh. his wife got so scared she hid underneath the dining room that table. That is true. That is true. <laughs> um, that was the one that my youngest son was really super excited about to see the Haunted Mansion. And then he literally two seconds into it covered into my arm. He's like, I don't watch. I was like, just, just it's fine. Like the whole drive down there. You get to pick the first ride. You're the youngest. I want Haunted Mansion. And my oldest is like, are you sure? <laughs> and he's like, I got it. I got it. Two seconds in. I don't got it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Uh, I like that one, though. That's that's probably one of my favorites. Um, okay. Well, good. Um, did you see a lot of Mart carts? Like, people in Mart carts. Oh, unbelievable number of people in Mart carts. Strollers. Like I said, none of them follow your rule of don't be an obstacle. Oh Everyone gosh. is an obstacle. Did, did you have a Mart cart yourself? No. Okay. He was. He was like George Costanza. He picked it up and ran with it. <laughs> Ow, my knee! Look, look, we can get up there in that line real quick. Let's go. He picked it up and ran. <laughs> uh, that is uh, one of my biggest beefs. Like when I was in uh, Disney last year, it was like, oh, my God. Get, I don't care if you have one. Get the fuck out of the way. If you have five people in your party, you don't need to walk five abreast. No. <laughs> and make everyone else get out of your way. Yes. Are they walking in downtown Cincinnati? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Especially the Mart cars. If there's more than one Mart cart in your family, you don't need them side by side. Yeah. You're racing. No, they're not. <laughs> they're literally going six six steps a minute. It's horrible. The only thing those people are racing to is the next soda machine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nothing wrong with that. There, there goes Alabama again. <laughs> Brian, I got it. Roll Tide. Oh, and they're back. <laughs> Roll Tide. Are you making a diabetes joke? <laughs> diabetes? <laughs> All right, Wilfred. <laughs> oh, poor Wilfred. I think he's dead, right? Wilfred no. Brimley? He is not. Isn't he? No. I thought he was. I think he died of diabetes. <laughs> Alice, hold on. Let's take a vote. I think he's dead. I think he's dead. Jeff? Two. Jeff? I said I thought he was dead. Okay. Three. Not, not dead. Oh. Nick? This is a. I gotta break it. <laughs> Do it. I either gotta make. N- oh, yeah. not dead. Uh, 2020. Uh, no. <laughs> Died yeah. August 1st, 2020. Oh, Man. There you go. But then August 4th, 2020, he rose. <laughs> 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 yeah, because he had to come back for the peeps. Yes. <laughs> no, no, he woke up. <laughs> uh, that's a TV show with Ross Marquand. <laughs> Are you dead? <laughs> Are they dead? He's, and we just played it. Great game. Yeah. Uh, again, he is. And uh, he's young again because he was in Cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> they left him a mark cart so he can get around. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Well, that's great, guys. Great. We mark. lost Alabama. <sighs> Roll Tide. Back on. <laughs> it's amazing how easy that is. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the state of Alabama think about John Calipari going to Arkansas? I'm sure that they love that. Well, they got a lot of you. State cars, of Kentucky's though. happy. A lot of the state of Kentucky is happy about that. Uh, any prediction on who the next UK basketball coach is going to be? Patino. Rick Patino. <laughs> Tubby Smith. <laughs> Saul Smith. <laughs> oh, not be Gillespie. Not be Billy Gillespie if we're going former UK coaches. Um, I, Chris Mack. Uh, I don't know. He took, he took the job of oh, College Charleston. But he could still leave. He could leave. Larry Bird. No. So... No who's, the, who's the University of Florida coach that went pro? Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan. He sucks in the pros. Yeah, that's the. They got to ask Where'd him. Where'd he go? They, they have to ask Dan Chicago. Hurley. Did he? Yeah. Dan Hurley's going to turn him down. Yeah. I didn't know he left. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Yeah. What about uh, Pope at uh, Utah State, being a Kentucky graduate, former player? Why are we talking UK talk? Well. Because they're one of the top programs in the country, and are they, they have a vacancy. Are they? They, they are. Is, in college is, basketball, they are. How about Jawan Howard? As much as most of us <laughs> dislike them, yes, they Jawan are. Jawan Howard and John Thompson, uh, <laughs> Patrick Ewing, Chris Mullen. Patrick Ewing. I forgot about that. They're all available. Was Patrick Ewing Georgetown? Yes. Okay. That didn't work out well, did it? It, it worked out as well as uh, <gasps> uh, up in... Uh, <gasps> Michigan Go ahead, Jeff. Too. I just thought of the perfect uh, coach to replace. You might be the same person as I think. Ted Lasso? Oh, I was thinking Kurt Rambis. Oh. <laughs> Led Tasso? No, Kurt Led Lasso. We Kurt need Ted Ram- there. Kurt Rambo? Kurt Rambo <laughs> might do, be a good one. Doug could get on his staff. 
Uh, Doug is the Kurt Rambis expert at yes. this podcast. Uh, anything else? Before so, so Doug, to- let us know. Do you think Kurt Rambis will take the Kentucky job when it's offered to him? Yes. Please let us know. Everybody look over here. Nothing to see here. So do you want to go to the final Bucky's treat or are we going to move on? Uh, we can do the final Bucky's, Bucky's treat. treat and then we'll do listener feedback. I'm not sure if this one's so much as a treat. This might be like a Doug treat. Just, oh, uh, is it ranch? Mm. Not ranch. No, it is not. pickled. Is it torture food? Oh, oh. Well, if we eat this, you have to eat the pickled jelly beans. Oh, no. Pickled, pickled quail, quail eggs. eggs. Oh, God, no, I'm out. I'm out. No, no. Brian, oh. Brian, do you eat peeps every oh, week? Jesus. Jason, you're eating one of these. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, actually I'll hold it up for the pop. This. Oh, here we so that is a fresh jar of pickled quail oh! eggs. I've always wanted to try pickled eggs, and I never have. Oh, God, this is going to be awful. This is a fresh jar. It's not like it's the is old it? jar. That's You heard the pop when he opened it. That doesn't mean anything. It means everything. You know, it, means, it, it, it was preserved. It was a low. Might need a fork. It was a low decibel <laughs> pop. It wasn't a high decibel pop. Uh, it's upstairs. Just go look around. <laughs> At least it's going to be it's vinegary. Gonna smell pickly. It's going to be vinegary. Like pickles. Got to be vinegary. It smells dill. I take it. Brian, lock the door. <laughs> I'm not going to smell that. I'm going to pass it up. <laughs> <laughs> you have a doctor's note. Right. So yeah. do yeah. I. <clears throat> I got a doctor's note. <laughs> look, my arm is broken. <laughs> uh, I got the clap. <laughs> <laughs> got coal miner. Well, I got the cough. I got the black lung. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. So Bucky's makes pickled quail eggs. Who'd have thought? This is a fantastic evening. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Don't drink that yet. The good news is we've got mystery soda to wash it down with. That too. Nick? Is that still in the shell? No. <laughs> You have to eat the shell. So it's out of the shell. You think? Are they, are they boiled quail eggs, then pickled? Yes. Hard boiled, hard boiled, then, okay, then pickled. Okay, with the shell removed. Right, I'll well. go first if you guys want me to. <laughs> nah, to I just got to get it. I just got to do it and get it over with. Are you going to do like one hole in the yeah, egg or are you going to bite it? No, it's just going to go. <laughs> one <laughs> swallow. Take some back. Going to pill it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to baby bird it yeah. to him. <laughs> but Blake does have the doctor's note, so yeah. Unless you want it to come back up on you there, Nick, we're not going to force Blake to that's like That's like an Inception joke. Because these are baby birds. Oh! Oh, they're slimy. Well, they've been they're... sitting in pickled juice for since they've been pickled. Listen. We're just going to get a live here uh, on Facebook at the History of Bad Ideas. Look at, oh, they're baby. Oh, God. They're quails. Oh, quails God. are small. This looks amazingly bad. Oh, God. <laughs> the Jason's reaction makes this 100% worse. I hate it. you. I don't care how bad it is. <laughs> Does not smell good. I will give you that. Oh, great! Is it better than the ranch smell? <laughs> well, my yes, I didn't vomit. That's a... Jim's going straight in. Oh the... God! Pickle egg. I've never had a pickled egg. Mm-hmm. See what Brian it's thinks. Egg with pickle. That <laughs> <laughs> definitely nowhere near as bad as we made it out to be. Hard boiled egg, pickled. Yeah, but well, but but although. The... It's... It's hard very to sw- pickle. <laughs> yeah, it's a very like swallowing it. You could all pickle. Yes. <laughs> oh god. god, that's going. That's going to keep me up at night. Yeah, I'm nope. not not excited about the 40 minute drive home after. <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole jar. Who wants more? Here, take take that jar. And put that down. I would feel bad taking more of those away from you. I think your son out in the green room needs to try one of these. <laughs> He just said, nope, I'm okay. Your dad's just a big baby. No, he doesn't like eggs either, which doesn't make it help. That doesn't help. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, nowhere near as bad as uh, we made it out to be. Like, you know, with my son, I think it should be like our movie theater thing, Jeff, that we used to do. <laughs> if you uh, want to get the good food, uh, good movies, guy, watch. take the oh, yeah. bad movies. So 100%. Same thing. 100%. If you don't try the bad food, you can't get the good food. Nick watched plenty of bad movies. And barely ever made it to a good one. Nick, are you going, <laughs> are for, you going for a second one? I'm, I'm going for number two. 
Those things are awful. What is wrong with you? No, not, oh. Especially if you have a little bit of water to get the like the the made pickle off of it. When yeah, you swallow, it's, it's it not might bad be a, at all. Might be a little too dill because uh, as you're chewing it, that's the more you chew it, the more all you get is the pickle flavor. <laughs> Just eating away like Thanksgiving dinner. What's going on? Oh, you want Thanksgiving dinner? We got a soda over there. You yeah, you Thanksgiving want to get that dinner. Soda. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we got a drink in front of us. Uh, this is from Rocket Fizz. This is a mystery flavor. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You, that that do, one's yours, Nick. Do we think it'll be better or worse than butter? It's got to be better. The butter right? soda last week was nasty. This sp- smells spicy. There's something floating in mine. That's a pickled egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a very caramel smell kind of off of it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Here goes. It's the... caramel or coffee. Oh, it could be a call. Let me see. What we got? Oh. I'm, I'm just stiffing stuff. Oh. Like caramel popcorn. Go ahead and taste That's... it. It's from Rocket Fizz. I, I think you might be gone to something there. That caramel popcorn, caramel, like, like Cracker Jack or something. Yeah, Cracker Jack. You call it Cracker Jack. Maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, that was a peanut that was yeah. in your drink. <laughs> <laughs> there was maple. One hundred percent maple jack. syrup, pancake syrup. Wow, it is. I, I think the gimp's right. Bacon, bacon soda with maple syrup. Bacon okay. with maple. Uh, from Way Lester's Fixins. It's artificially flavored. What? Oh. Kind of odd. You all get your fixins. Wow. Well, that was better than the butter. That yes. butter soda was quite possibly one of the worst things I've had in a long time. Well, I mean, butter soda was still better. It's, I don't think it's a top five bad thing we've had on here. No. It is not. No. no. <laughs> and that's how bad it is. <laughs> that it, it, it was just weird. I'd rather, I'd rather have the pickled quail egg than the butter soda, though. Oh, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. The butter soda just was like just clung to you. I think it was literally like drinking butter. Like, yeah, I mean, like was, no, I think drinking butter would have been better than that. I think the carbonation ruined, like, made it worse. Oh yeah, yeah. It just kind of sat with me throughout the whole podcast. I, th- it, uh, I don't think it was like drinking butter. I think it was like drinking that artificial butter stuff they put on your popcorn. I'd rather stuff. drink that. Oh, than I hate that. that. Did, it, I, I did think... it coat the inside of your mouth like butter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And seriously, like forty minutes later, I still felt it. Like, oh. Forty minutes later, Jason still felt it in his mouth. I did. So the worst thing have to said. be what the ranch ice cream, the ranch ice cream, Thanksgiving Day soda. Oh yeah, that was yep. terrible. Yep. Um, what else do we have that was horrendous? What else did Doug give us? One of the other <laughs> flavors of ice cream was pretty bad. The, was mac, the and mac and cheese. Cheese. I mean, it wasn't good. I'm trying to think. Of I don't think mac and cheese was the bad. That bad. It wasn't gross, but it wasn't good. Next, did you had some pickled quail eggs. You want some pickled jelly beans? Sure, I'll try pickled jelly beans. Okay, they're right there. We this show those. has just become a taste test this week. Yeah, we oh. had those a couple weeks ago. They weren't that good. But they weren't awful. I mean, they are jelly beans with the taste of pickles. So, I mean, Blake, they you, are as advertised. Like you picked a great episode to come back on. You, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know why he is abstaining? All these weeks, we don't have a fucking Oreo in here for him. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have an Oreo. <laughs> there are no Oreos in the studio this week. What do you think about those, yeah. Nick? <laughs> He's still, still chewing. chewing. <laughs> still chewing. Good podcast. He, chewy. he took a handful instead of just one. He he took a uh, he went all in. Boss. Oh, level two amount of those, <laughs> like I did. Oh, we can still give him an entire package of level two final boss craisins. We do have two of those left. <laughs> oh we, man, do we also I can have... smell that now. That... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're. Uh... They started off with a decent dill flavor, but I don't know if it was the fact that I took too many of them, <laughs> but it, would, it turned very artificial very quickly. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's like you, the wrong chewing for that flavor. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have me another of these uh, Shamoy peach rings. Blake, why don't you us uh, up with some listener feedback? All right. Ugh. Ah, sorry. Some listener feedback. Oh, it helps if I put my old man specs on. The bam. Uh, save time because we're going over. Uh, Dungaroo Doug. Uh, number one. Seven. Fan. The Jewel of the Licking. Postman. Chili Billy. Beaver Big, Hands. Big Sunny D. D. Ape Hands. The Dugasaurus. Ape Bit. Seven. Delivers thrice. Not once. Dad. Roll Tide. Oh, sorry. 
That's great that the Super Cincy Expo Gorilla mascot was named Ape Bit. But I think Dunkaroo Doug would have been better. Thoughts? Uh, Ape Bit was the, is the new mascot of it. Um, yeah, we... Uh, what, what was the was deal our... with the different colored dots for the so, votes? So you need to explain that. So blue was for Boys? Ape Bit. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, okay. Because uh, there was blue and pink. Pink was for Dewey. We had two different colors. And yeah. three, three mascots that we had to name. We had two colors, three mascots. So we alternated Gabe uh, the Gaming Gorilla. Okay. B- Brad just decided he was putting blue on this and pink on this and alternating in the middle. Okay. That's it. Yep. All right. So uh, fans were able to vote on the name of the new mascot online. The three winners were 8-Bit, mm-hmm. uh, Gabe the Gaming Gorilla, Triple G, mm-hmm. and Dewey. Yeah. Uh, so all weekend, everyone, we you know, we were asking people as they were walking by to vote, and 8-Bit was the winner uh, in yes. runaway fashion. Yes. Yeah, I think he had more than the other two combined. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was 140-something. 147 to, f- let's see, f- uh, 56 for mm-hmm. Gabe. And like Dewey 47. 48, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just think it's very nice and kind of Doug to um, to volunteer to, to dress up as 8-Bit next year. Problem is they got to figure out how to put his gloves on. Yeah, they got to get bigger hands. Yeah, made. for the mascot. <laughs> just, he doesn't need gloves or doesn't need hands. He has them already. That's true. He just I mean, he does out. have yeah. hands. The problem, mean, the he problem doesn't even is, need a mask. The problem is trying to get a shirt that has sleeves that go over those hands. <laughs> That's true. Uh, what else we got? Just show up and be himself. There you go, Doug. <laughs> Let's get him some Mickey hands. <laughs> there you go, like big giant Mickey hands. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Brad of Tubi Two tu- Tubi Tuesdays. Ooh, That's today. What flavors of Oreos, soda, or ice cream are you hoping for this year? Ranch. Oh, no. sorry. No. Um. I have one thing to say to Jason. Go fuck yourself. Sorry, I'm mm-hmm. bad. Yes, I I second. Red velvet cake. We, we've, we've already, already had, had soda. Red velvet cake soda. Yeah. Okay, we'll be on the lookout for red velvet soda. Nick, anything? What kind do you want? Uh, pineapple Oreos. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Didn't they make pina colada? Is that what the one was? Maybe pizza flavored ice cream. I I personally would like banana pudding flavored Oreos. Mm. Aren't those just called Nilla wafers with banana pudding in them? But I would like to see Oreos spin ah, on that. Gotcha. It's like o- it, would have Oreo... the, it would have to be the white cookie, the yellow cookie. Oh, yeah. yeah It'd yeah. be like an Oreo mating with a banana moon pie. But You're I'm... a banana moon pie. <laughs> a root beer Oreo? Ooh. Uh, maybe a banana. A root beer float? Maybe like a banana. Oh, or is it a banana yeah, root bread? Root beer cream uh, and the chocolate cake? The uh, cookies? You know, Jim. Good. Uh, since you said that, uh, I I was. Uh, oh my god! Was, how much food are we eating today? I was given a a, a little uh, bribe on my way out the door from Doctor Dana to bring with me. See, uh, we have a the newest flavor of Pop Tart that came out. It's the frosted banana bread. Can we wait till next week? No, no. Okay. See, this is why Doctor Dana gets Canadian of the Year. Diabetes. I will We're also say here eating. Terrible tasting stuff, and she gives us something to clean our palate with. <laughs> she, she's just she's just making sure she uh, guaranteed work for the yep. medical there we go. community. <laughs> Take note, Nick. She's keeping herself in business. <laughs> All my kids did have the banana pudding from Bucky's when, on, during our trip, and they said it was delicious. And you didn't bring that to us. Did they eat? I quail did not. Eggs? They have not. They okay. they might. I'm going to uh, bring them home. They could. Delightful. <sighs> Um, Je- is, Jeff doesn't get one. <laughs> is this uh, out of your here. Uh, purview here, uh, Blake? Or I can smell them. I can sniff them. Ah. <laughs> oh, I only get a half of one. Oh, that's a disappointment. Well, I well, mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> we can says. open more. We just opened one package so far, and we oh, split them up. I mean, we've gotcha. still got a, like an hour and a half to go. So. What? Hmm. Oh, well, these are delightful. That is banana. That is a very banana f- taste. Not oh, even like toasty. Oh, yeah. yes. These, oh, these would be so good warmed up. I agree. They're really good. Well, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Dana. Thank you, Dr. Dana. You know, she was at the Super Cincy Expo, and she is a delight. She really is. I might have to go back to 
Pop Tarts for my morning meal. What's your morning meal now? Oats. Oh, overnight oats. <laughs> okay. Um, what that else we got? A tasty Pop Tart. Oh, it was a good Pop Tart. I always got there, Blake. Brent of Home Video Hustle. Oh, Brent. What is your favorite magazine you used to read back in your younger days? Depends how young I want to go back to. I'll give us a couple. I'm assuming print media days. Highlights. Yeah, yeah, go back to highlights or... Uh, highlights. Raccoon right. Rick. Ranger Rick. Or Ranger, Ranger, Ranger Rick. Of course, I do like Raccoon Rick now. <laughs> <laughs> trademark it. Jeff, trademark. Trademark. Thank you. Boys Life magazine. Boys Life. Uh, Maxim. <laughs> or, or you go, Maxim. <laughs> Penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pre- I, Playboy had good articles. Yeah. Jason I, was more of a Reader's Digest, yeah. looking for the. Oh, those drawings were so sexy. Oh, those black and white drawings they had in Reader's Digest. Oh, jugs. <laughs> jugs. Okay, Al Bundy. No, I actually did like Maxim because they had some stupid articles that were like kind of interesting. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. They had Dear a kind of stupid but interesting. <laughs> yeah. Explains a lot, Jason. I like, think he that's just, his personality. <laughs> <laughs> I think he kind of described our podcast. Yes. Kind of yeah. stupid, but interesting. Put that on the poster. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> that could be, that could replace the Cincinnati's most prolific entertainment podcast. Yeah. Well, since we missed an episode, we did. We are no longer <sighs> prolific. We did not miss an episode. We did an episode. <laughs> the just, one and only episode that Doctor Dana has been recorded on. <laughs> the it's we known as the uh, Hobie, the Lost episode, featuring Doctor Dana. Good job. Ah. Uh I I'll say probably. I mean, Sports Illustrated. I mean, I I stopped reading it once the internet came around, but I had. And you're the reason they fold it now. I actually did like. If we're talking sports, I did like ESPN the magazine. I, I had one. Yeah. Oh, you mean Espen? Yes. <laughs> I like Nintendo Power growing up. That was a fun little thing. Uh, I had my back in high school and college. I read Running Times, not Runner's World, because that should have been called Jogger, Jogger's World. <laughs> oh, it was all about jogging, huh? It was about like Running Times was more for the uh, competitive. competitive, and Running Runner's World was for the recreational. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Uh, what else? Okay. So oh, I'm not I was, done with this question. Oh, yeah, so when I was a kid, it was mad, and then I yep. graduated mad to cracked. National Lampoon. <laughs> cracked was fun too. Cracked was bad. good as well. Yeah, they I, still have Mad Magazine out. What me mm-hmm. worry? Yeah. Oh, what was I? I, I would read uh, Circus and uh, what was the other one for the uh, the metalheads? What about the one I you forgot the name of it? The head all the puzzles games. games? Mm-hmm. Oh, I still do that puzzler. The Riddler. Nick, anything with you? Anything else besides Ranger Rick? Newsweek, Time, Outdoor, Outdoor, look. Uh, Muscle Fitness? No. No. Was it, it, what, cycling, or was the one that that had the, uh, if you think you're, like, neighborhoods are dangerous, why don't you try riding through uh, over the Rhine uh, Cincinnati neighborhood while uh, having $20 uh, (laughs) bills, like, Who's that your, <laughs> which one was that from? I can't remember. <laughs> they, they want you to ride through over the Rhine. Was that an actual magazine? Yeah, it was, that they're talking. Somebody said they're about bad neighborhoods, and they're like, "Yeah, go through over the Rhine while having twenty dollar bills pinned all over yourself." <laughs> and it printed. <laughs> it was like a question. Like it was like in like the questions or answers oh, okay. or something. <laughs> Hit uh, Parader. Hit Parader was the other metal magazine from the eighties, nineties. I remember that one. Uh, Pro Wrestling Insider, PWI. I used to watch it. Read that. No one else cared. Watch, you, you used to watch that magazine? I did used to watch it. I just watched it on the shelf because I couldn't afford it. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Mom and Dad wouldn't buy it for him. No. Damn it. I knew I liked them. Uh, what else it, you got, Blake? His grandma would buy, like, the knockoff uh, amateur wrestler <laughs> insider. Oh, <laughs> Amateur wrestler outside. <laughs> <laughs> With his knockoff GoBots. <laughs> Stupid GoBots. Not even real go buds. <laughs> you turn it into a ball. <laughs> Yay! This robot turns into another robot. <laughs> this robot turns into a rectangle. What? <laughs> Why? Why? What's the point of that? Hey, that's impressive because this 3D robot turns into a t- two-dimensional figure. 
Yes. That's impressive. A cube. Sorry. Uh, what else you got, Blake? Uh, from Pittsburgh Nerd. Is it still cool to collect Funkos? I didn't know it ever was cool. I hope it is. We we'll give a bunch of them away at the, <laughs> at the expos. We are going to be giving a lot. Not, yeah. not only that, but I think most people I know this weekend bought them at at the Super Cincy Expo. Uh, I got the Flashing Gremlin yeah. uh, from the movie Gremlins uh, too. Yeah, so I was pretty excited about that one. But the, the we we hang out in the non cool people. That's true. So is it it's cool, cool for us. Well, yeah, I mean. But why? Well, you know, one collects things because it's cool to collect. They That's collect true. things because they want to have them, and they're fun. Uh, we gave one uh, Alex I, I, Trebek away. I we, collect them for speculation. I, I just think they're going to get like my Beanie Bane's collection. I just can't wait to uh, you, sell that for money. Do you think you waited too long to sell your Beanie Babies? <laughs> no, no, you, you got to hold on to them longer. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, the longer you have them, the more in value they they go up. I mean, these baseball cards I have from 1986 have to be worth something someday. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm really excited about my 1988 tops ones that have the wooden uh, uh, frame to them. Oh, I, I love those. The so, the most mass produced baseball card yes. of all time. Hey. Well, Jeff's 1990s comics are really going to yeah. go up in price. I, I am just waiting for the death of Superman comic to <laughs> put me, uh, sustain me through my retirement. Hey, this is going to be uh, worth millions. How many did they make? Ten million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think that's how it works, but okay, sure. I made the mistake of not taking the 50 bucks when someone offered me for it once. <laughs> I should have run home, got it, and brought it immediately. <laughs> well, it's a tricky play. Let's think. Let's think about this one. <laughs> Got to play the long game. Can yeah. You, can you sell it for fifty cents today? Oh, you probably get a couple bucks. It's like away. five bucks. I think is what it's worth now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But it comes with an armband to mourn Superman. Do you have the button too? There's a button in there too. If the button's in there, I never opened it. It's so. a black uh, button that says "R.I.P." What is it? Button. Oh, okay. I plan Bun. on re- I plan on Bun. retiring on my Billy Ripken fuckface uh, <laughs> card. Like that one, uh, Nick. You got anything you're retiring on? Any collectible? Bourbon. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. How many bourbons? Yep. How many things of bourbon do you have? A, a lot. <laughs> Best color man visitor. Now, now, now for Nick retiring, do you want me to count? Mean, <laughs> yes, go home and count and come it back. Does, it doesn't mean he's selling them to get the money. It means when he's retired, he's going to be enjoying <laughs> a lot of bourbon. Nick, what are you going to retire with? Uh, my 401k, you dumbass. <laughs> uh, I think well, since I didn't win the Powerball last week, <laughs> did anyone win it last? Yeah, yeah. somebody Oregon. from Oregon. One person in Oregon. Oregon. Oh. Or at least. One ticket. It could have been a group of people. Yeah. We haven't heard the one ticket yet. If I won that, I would have paid for you guys to uh, get uh, professional drivers to drive you here every week to and help to and from. <laughs> Why you wouldn't have like built a studio? I would have, but it's still been at my house. <laughs> he hates building, building the a house. studio. We're in it right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah built you a studio. So I would have got you professional drivers. See. At least coming here. I don't know about going home. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I've only wow. got one point three billion dollars. I can get you here, but yeah. you got to figure this your own way. Out. A two way amount of money. This here. is not charity, okay? <laughs> if I win again, you can get home. <laughs> Call an Uber bum. <laughs> We're just going to the Gimp's house. It's closer. Have a good day. <laughs> uh, I'm just happy you didn't punch me this week with all the Stallone jokes. So I so, appreciate that, Brian. So, Brian, did you get any good news coming, like maybe a Amazon show or uh, something happening good with Tulsa King? Um, I don't think it was necessarily good news. <laughs> uh, Season two? Uh, yeah. The casting agency out of Atlanta uh, quit working on uh, the Tulsa King show. Oh. Uh, apparently... Uh, Slyvester is not the nicest <laughs> to the extras. Oh, uh, denigrated them. Uh, said some other not so colorful things to them. Well, to oh. be fair, he is a mob boss. That Correct. doesn't seem right. He was so nice when uh, behind the scenes when they did those behind the scenes sh- shoots and This Is Us, and they were on the set. 
and and mm-hmm. the, the character was working yeah. with Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Sylvester Stallone was so nice to everybody on the Didn't you share an article about, uh, isn't somebody going to be... Oh, a new, yeah. a new, a new I was, person I was waiting, there. I was waiting for news of the geek. That's right. Uh, go ahead and report is it. Is that on here? Uh, I don't think it is. I was just going to interrupt Jason and okay, go ahead. break it myself. I mean, um, if you want, I can hit the button. I'm ready to go. No, well, no Blake still has one more. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, it was announced that uh, Frank Grillo is joining season two of Tulsa King. Well, of course. They got rid of the casting thing, so they added Frankie Productions to help out. Yeah, that was just today that, that apparently one of the, the casting. Yeah, that's why Frankie him, came on. They so. knew it was coming. Apparently, uh, they the casting agency was sending like forty and fifty year old people for like the the bar scenes that they mm-hmm. were filming when it was supposed to be like twenty to thirty year olds, and he oh. was getting pissed about it. Oh, and he was like just not being very friendly, friendly about to, towards those people. So oh, wait a minute, but these are supposed to be people from Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, twenty looks thirty five to forty. <laughs> Great, we just lost Oklahoma. Uh, Boomer Schumer. Yeah, there we go. And we're back. <laughs> so, Blake, wrap up the news of the geek. You know, I, I, so there you go, uh, Pittsburgh nerd. <laughs> yes, it yes, is it's still, still cool, cool to collect, to collect Funko Pops. <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned This Is Us. My wife started watching This Is Us, so by de facto, I'm forced to as well. Yeah. Okay. What a depressing fucking show. Oh, it doesn't get much happier. I want to kill myself. It doesn't get much happier. I, I, we're like, you've only seen episode one. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm like, there's a there's a second season. Oh my god! There's like there's five. five, five or six I don't know. It's hor- I can't. It's horrible. I, I want to. It gets my- a little ridiculous at the it, end. It's I like a, it's, it's like living through a Billie Eilish song. Hey, uh, I don't know if you saw, but she's <laughs> dropping that third album soon. <laughs> Stop it! You're going to get tra- we're going to get in trouble. It sounds too much like it. Hey, I think that's, Blake just that's a won Grammy. an Oscar. <laughs> I, it was if I thought it was Grammy uh, immediately. Emmy, all of them. Just give them everything. An egot. <laughs> uh, we got Blake, uh, for Professor Number One, and Doctor Number One. Hobie is against nepotism. Then why are Jim and Doug on the podcast? Doug isn't. <laughs> well, he's on <laughs> it, not regularly, but yes. Uh, Jim just showed up. Yeah, he's I, like Brian. He just showed up. Well, no, well, wouldn't Ta- it, wouldn't it be like I was like Jim? Yeah, probably more so than anything. Still, the best was but, Brian showed up. Oh, okay. Oh, but, <laughs> Next week he showed up again. Oh, I guess we're doing this. Let's do it. Okay, <laughs> that's how Brian got on. Yeah. Okay, one first. The original idea included Jim. It did. <laughs> it did. But but his work schedule precluded him from right. being able to to really commit that. at the time. And so then we actually made him audition. And put him through the ringer before he was able to to actually join. It took me about about a hundred and some episodes to actually finish the auditioning yeah. process. Yeah, but once you did, but I mean, they hired Blake in front of me. Blake, eighteen episodes in. Blake was on episode eighteen. He was regular by twenty. I didn't have a professional golfing career or bowling career to interfere. <laughs> no, uh, it came down to Blake or culture b- babble, so it was a tough call. <laughs> no, that uh, was the easiest call we ever made. It was, it was. That was a that was a tough one. Um, so Blake got on right then. Um, but who who was the first guest? Uh, Nick. Well, the, and he's back. Number back. episode three, which was the worst episode <laughs> ever because <laughs> the, the Blue Yeti mics did not like three what, Yetis. The Blue Yeti mics were okay. It was the third mic we attempted to add. Yes. That screwed everything. That did not go well. We almost ended the podcast at that point. Hey, it's 929. <laughs> uh, that was a rough one. So do not go back and listen to episode three. Not because of the content. It's just tough to listen to. Just so you know, we all have, well, you guys have three. I've got two. A serving size for pickled quail eggs is four pickled quail eggs. So <laughs> four is an entire God. serving size? Wow. Maybe if You've got cold? three to go. Maybe if they were cold. <laughs> I can put them in the fridge for you no, and cool them don't. down by the end. No. We, we can eat cold ones next week. Put them in the fridge. No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jeff, give me some news of the geek. It's time for a brand new installment of the News of the Geek. Uh, let's see here. Harvard University. Did we do this one last week about no, the human skin? We, we did we, not. We you, waited. You for waited. Was oh, yeah. We, that's right. Harvard University said, said it has removed human skin from the binding of a 19th century book about the afterlife that has been in its collection since the 1930s. It's not the Necronomicon? Nope. 
now. Uh, the they DC- wouldn't have been able to remove it oh. if it was a Necronomicon. <laughs> it's, ca- it's kind of close on the subject matter. Ooh. The decision came after a review found ethical concerns with the book's origin and history. The book, found in human flesh and housed in Halfton Library for almost a century, Hot. was so popular that it inspired hazing rituals at Harvard University. I'm at Harvard. This guy here is dead. <laughs> then Can't cross think? him off the list. Uh, let's see here. Inspired hazing rituals. Like, what kind of hazing rituals do they say? Killing people and turning them into books. <laughs> <laughs> go uh, go lick the, the cover. <laughs> <That's awesome>. oh. <laughs> do it. Do it. Oh, Chauncey has to lick the cover. Let's see if he does it. So that's how Mr. Skin was uh, invented. <laughs> Come on, Chauncey. No worse than your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she said she loves me. <laughs> Ew. (laughs) (laughs) Now, 10 years after scientists at Harvard confirmed the French book uh, about the destiny of the human soul is bound in human skin. uh, We already did that. Uh, Let's see here. Taken from the back of a woman, a psychiatric patient in a French hospital who died of a stroke in the 1800s, the skin had been placed into, quote, into respectful temporary storage to the library decides how to dispose of it in a dignified manner. manner, Dignified. The removal followed years of debate. I'm sorry, Brian. About how the university should handle the binding. And a 20, 2022 Harvard report focusing on human remains in university collections. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. What? They human have an entire remains report. In human remains in university collections. Well, what about skeletons? Yeah. Because I know a lot of the original yeah. skeletons in colleges were real human skeletons. Uh, which was spurred by the reckoning with how racism, slavery, and colon- colonialism... Can't say that. Help you you sta- almost got it right. Helped establish universities and museums. Uh, the book bound in human skin was a copy of De Estes de la Main by Ariano Hosen. And where do you get Ariano <laughs> French novelist from? and poet. Is she the donut licker? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, original, the original donut licker. No, she licked the skin. Is she the skin licker? <laughs> yes. The skin licker gifted the printed book of the, uh, uh, to his friend Ludwig Buland in the early 1800s. Buland, a doctor, bound the book in human skin that he had acquired himself while still a medical student, according to a handwritten note inserted into the volume. Do you, when you say the word doctor, do you have to go, a doctor? <laughs> yes. The well, note. especially because it's a French doctor. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, the doctor. <laughs> the good news is the note also describes the process used to treat the skin. Oh, that's nice. So it could be used to bind the text. Quote, a book about the human soul deserved to have a human covering, Bolin wrote. Nope. By looking carefully, you easily distinguish the pores of the skin. Okay, psycho. I think this is just a great job of recycling. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Harvard. I just got suspended for next week. (laughs) Harvard accepted the book from John B. Stetson, an American diplomat, and Harvard graduate in 1934. His travel to Alton Library in 1944. Formally donated to Harvard in 1954. This can't end fast enough. <laughs> I have to apologize and to all of our listeners. And I think he's the only listeners. one amused by it. Yes. <laughs> I'm only amused because it's annoying Jim over here. Every time I say it, he about ready to hit me with the mic. Oh. Uh, ow! <laughs> I'm going to okay. start throwing okay. quail eggs at you in a second. Okay, the mic still works. <laughs> One of the strongest voice critique in the blog belonged to Paul Needleham, a rare book librarian at Princeton University. He said the blog post should be deleted and the books covered buried. Where's well, the Alan Needleham? It's Needham. <laughs> Needle deck. Uh, oh. Although <laughs> <laughs> he just took the lid off those quail eggs. <laughs> just get I was getting them ready for the, the yeah, for the throw for you. <laughs> oh. That's pungent. Anyways, they fucking got rid of the book. <laughs> I want you to read that sentences have all those difficult words in it. And the then Harvard had carried a blog post titled. Where's that at? Oh, then Harvard had carried a blog post titled Caveat Lecter, announcing, quote, good news for fans of anthropomatic <laughs> bibliomaniacs <laughs> Biblo- <laughs> and cannibals alike. Oh, so Bibliopagy. They, did they, cons- did they consult with Army Hammer? Yes. <laughs> they bring him in to make sure. We don't know what to skin. do with the skin. Army's like, I'll handle it. <laughs> hey, you guys need need me to come in? 
I can, I, can, I can come in and check that out for you. I don't got anything going on. I got a TV show. Uh, it was canceled. Oh, that's right. It was canceled. Yeah, they ran out of people. That's right. Wait, do you have a fork and some salt? <laughs> Get out, Army. We're not telling you again. No, I'm actually... The, this next sentence... You What's know, that? Is like, according to the Dark Archives, a book written by Megan Rosenblum, a librarian and an expert on anthropodermic bibliopegy. Mm-hmm. The practice of binding <laughs> books in human skin. Who knew? She's an She's expert. A, expert. Expert in binding books in human skin. Well, the major problem they have with it is the person, the, the skin they used, probably, probably did not uh, okay their usage of well, their skin. Well, that's for the, the issue, or, and that's what they're going to basically try to figure out how to do, uh, properly, you know, basically put it to rest. of it. Yeah. To put it to rest. Like, okay. some people might die and say, hey, use my skin to bind books. <laughs> I, maybe I'll do that. It's a lot of books. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Man. Jason used to have one friend on the show. <laughs> I think he lo- just lost him. <laughs> oh, that was hard. And the fact that he's boxed in back there like he is. Oh. Was that a fat joke, Jason? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey, Jim, you remember this weekend when you said everyone's just kind of waiting for me to just punch Jason? <laughs> yes. I think now we're waiting for, for Jeff. <laughs> simmer, d- simmer down here, everybody. You're an asshole. <laughs> when you say everybody. You're just mad because you didn't think of it. <laughs> no, he's not an you. asshole. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Just slip down. But he's allowed to. It's his brother. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, next to Jeff for 539 episodes or whatever we're on. No, you missed two last month. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, per WKYC in Ashtabula, Ohio. Two women are facing charges in Ashtabula County after allegedly taking a dead man to the bank to withdraw money. <laughs> I see a movie about this. <laughs> the incident happened on M- March 4th when Ashtabula police received a call from the county medical center about a deceased elderly man who was dropped off at the facility by two un- un- unidentified women. Officials the easiest the t- word on the page. <laughs> Officials say the two women who have since been identified, so they're not unidentified anymore. They were then. <laughs> 55-year-old Loreen Farello and 63-year-old Kareen Kasbach. Karen. Oh, my God. The name is Karen. <laughs> what did I say? Kareen. Karen. Hello, Kareen. <laughs> you're, you're doing it on purpose, and it's actually, not funny. Actually, I screwed that up on purpose. Not on, purpose so. on accident? Yes. <laughs> Left shortly after arriving at the ACMC without providing any information about the deceased man or themselves. A few hours later, one of the women contacted uh, the medical center and gave them information about the man, who was identified as 80-year-old Douglas Layman. Police responded to the home and interviewed Farello and Cashbaum. Ashtabula Police Chief Robert Stell says the women allegedly found Layman dead inside his home, where they both had been residing. With the help of a third individual, the women allegedly placed Layman in the front of the front seat of his car, drove to a bank where they withdrew an undisclosed amount of money from his account. Hey, Jim. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, is that Mr. Layman over there? Yeah. She's nodding. <laughs> it would, yeah, if, it would, it would have been it. more impressive if they put him in the driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, why do you have a piece of string attached to your wrist <laughs> and attached to Mr. Layman? <laughs> no reason. It's, uh, quote, it's father, it is father alleged that Mr. Layman was placed in the vehicle in such a manner that he would be visible to bank staff in order to make the withdrawal. Because they recognized him on site. Yep. Both of the women have been charged with gross abuse of a corpse and theft from a person in a protected class. Okay, title for the show, Weekend at Layman's. <laughs> $5,000 bond was set. Theft from, from a person in a protected class is yeah. elderly. dead. A protected elderly. He's no longer elderly if he is dead. Well, you fight that. <laughs> you go to her attorney. I'm going to become an attorney now. Next on the people's court. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, did you... Ha- Once he it? no longer lives, he is n- no longer elderly. W- was the was the bank people like, uh, he's dead, and they're like, no, he's alive, and it's kind of like the bird skit from, uh, the dead oh, parrot dead skit. parrot skit. <laughs> from Monty Python. <laughs> well, they couldn't hear him because they had to keep the music up so loud in the car to keep him being able to wave and drive, and... <laughs> he's just pining for the fjords. 
Ah, uh, so there you go. There's the news geeks. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, do your friends from Ashtabula have any? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to ask them about <laughs> this next time I talk to them. It's a common occurrence up there. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, so, so what record did your friends from Ashtabula decide on listening to yesterday while watching the eclipse? Uh, he he said the, the the weather cleared up a little. So, yeah, uh, my my friend asked posed the question. He didn't know which. Uh, Pink Floyd album to listen to while getting ready for the eclipse if he should listen to Dark Side of the Mm. Moon or Obscured by Clouds. But the weather cleared up, so he listened to Dark Side of the Moon. Good call. Good call. Uh, Number uh, box office news, Jeff? Uh, And world of reports? Blake, maybe you got special powers because of the eclipse. mm. Well, I do have a blind spot in the middle of my retina. Oh, that's what you get for looking at the eclipse without the special glasses. Hey, if the president can do it. I was just staring at the sun all day today. Because <laughs> apparently yeah. it's okay. It's okay to stare at the sun when the moon's not in front of yeah. it. Yeah. It's time for box office bombs. All right. Well, we really don't have any bombs to report this no. week that I know of. So we'll just go straight into the top five grossing films of the weekend. Coming in at number one, Godzilla X Kong, colon, The New Empire. Made $32 million, a total of $135 million on a $135 million budget. There you Boom, go. money back. Yep. Jason, Everything's seen in here this? on the screen. Not yet. I want to, though. I do. <clears throat> What's the, who makes fucking Kong a giant gauntlet? I'm sorry, what? Didn't they make Kong like a giant gauntlet? Isn't that the premise of this movie? Oh, he's yeah, got, like, he's got like an axe and he's got... gauntlet. Yeah, the Thanos yeah, arm. Yeah. Oh, they give him a glove? Yeah. Yeah. Which was a good idea, right? Sure, no. yeah. Well, this giant monster needs help. Let's just help yeah. him. Well, if he's going after Godzilla, who is like a... They join up. It's like a buddy cop. The the axe makes me think they're going against They're each other. not. They join up and they go against other monkeys. And you want to see this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Looks fun. Looks fun. Coming in at number two, Monkey <laughs> Man, who apparently is going uh, up against Godzilla and Kong. No, they they team up together. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's Monkey like a, Man teams up. It's like a buddy cop movie. Uh, <laughs> well, Monkey Man made ten point two million in its opening weekend on a ten million dollar budget. Boom! Sounds Money like back. a success. Money back. James Look excited about this movie. Woo. Number three, we've got Ghostbusters colon Frozen Empire. I hear they're taking on Kong, Godzilla, and Monkey Man. <laughs> yeah, it's like a buddy cop movie. <laughs> it made $9 million, a total of $89 million on a $100 million budget. I want to see this. Well, it looks like we need at least two more weeks for them to get their money back. You should just like go see some of these movies. I should. <laughs> I should. Keep saying you want to see them. I week. know. Now that you don't have an expo to take up all your time, that's true. That is true. Yeah, we got to get ready for the next one. Yeah, I got to take a franchise and MLB the Show twenty four. Yeah, waste pick Baltimore. I hear they're going to be good. That's what I heard. Coming in at number four, the first Omen made eight point five million in its opening weekend on a thirty million dollar budget. I don't think it's going to make some money back. Nah, not domestically, and I don't know. Do Omen movies do well I overseas? Think it's like Eleven million total. Not good. No. Coming in at number five, Kung Fu Panda 4 made another $8 million, a total of $166 million on an $80 million budget. Remember when Crudes 2 was in the theaters during the pandemic? For 60... Uh-huh. 16 weeks? 60 weeks? Man, yeah, pretty much. It, it he made his money tw- back. 28 weeks? 28 weeks? Yeah. He made his money back. You know, Kung Fu Panda could have been a great uh, uh, product placement for Action Pants. Action for jeans. A, action, oh, jeans. action jeans. For a comeback. Chuck Norris Chuck action Norris. jeans. That's right. Because there's space in the crotch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Poe would that. probably need extra space yeah. for his karate kicks. And, his and then that was a fat joke. Oh. Uh, Pablo Sandoval definitely needed a bigger belt. <laughs> <laughs> Big panda. 
Uh, what else? We got upcoming. Upcoming April twelfth of twenty twenty four. We have Civil War, a journey across a dystopian future of America, following a team of military and. Amb- Embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. I very much want to see this. I do, too. Who is in I, Civil War? Jesse. Nick Offerman. Ooh. Kirsten Dunst. Ooh. Her husband. Uh, Wagner Mora. Nope, not him. Jeffers, <laughs> Jefferson White. Nope, nope, not him. But he was in... Uh, Jefferson White's in Yellowstone. Yes. Ah. He's Jimmy. Uh-huh. Nelson Lee. That's not her husband either. Evan Lai. Nope. nope. Uh, Kaylee Spaney. Nope. Nope. Uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson. Nope. Nope. Maybe. Uh, Vince Pisani. Nope. Nope. Justin James Boykin. Nope. Nope. Jess Matney. Nope. Greg Hill. Oh, my God. Get to him. <laughs> Edmund Donovan. Tim James. Simeon Freeman. James. Yep. Jesse Jonas. Plemons. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's got a... Small role. Yes. <laughs> he yeah. is not listed in the top build K yeah. Ryan's Jesse Plemons. <laughs> yeah, Jesse Plemons is uh, Garrison Dunn's husband. I want to see this. You too. know, you know, I know this movie's fiction because California and Texas are on the same side. I know. How does that work? <laughs> no way does that work in real life. <laughs> Did he like write or produce this or something where he's like very like not credited? Plemons? Yeah. No. Uh directed by Alex Garland. Written by Alex Garland. Yeah. Not either of those names are Jesse Plemons. <laughs> or his Dustin Dern's wife. Uh, what else we got coming out? And apparently, Ugh. don't tell mom the babysitter's dad. Oh, my God. Tanya finds her summer plans canceled when her mom jets off on a last-minute retreat, and the elderly babysitter who arrives at her door unexpectedly passes away. So you post... These two, but you don't post. Let's see what other movies. Come hey, out you this can week. do this section. Let's see what else comes out this week. We, I don't know. We have. Uh, mm-hmm. So is this a remake of Don't Tell Mom yes. the Babysitter's? Dad? Why are they remaking Don't Tell Mom the I Babysitter's? Dad? Yeah, I was wondering about that. I we, saw it on the. We have the movie Arcadian. A father and his twin teenage sons fight to survive in a remote farmhouse at the end of the world, starring Nicolas Cage. Oh, now Nicolas Cage movie's coming out, and you don't put that on the upcoming movies? Sorry. Or let's see, we also have... We want to leave this space blank from now on. <laughs> we also and have, you get to put the upcoming up. We have Sting, after raising an unnervingly sp- a talented spider in secret, 12-year-old Charlotte must face the facts about her pet and fight for her family's survival when the once charming creature rapidly transforms into a giant flesh-eating monster. So none of these films are going to make more than ten dollars. They must make twelve. So I was only doing the big. Is that a office. remake of Charlotte's Web? <laughs> the, the, the scary version. The scary version. And then we have the movie Damaged. Uh, Dan Lawson, a Chicago detective, travels to Scotland to link up with Scottish detective Boyd following the resurgence of a serial killer whose crimes match an unsolved case that he looked into five years previous in Chicago. This has some unknown actors by the name of Samuel L. Jackson. Who's that? I don't know. Vincent Castle, no, Johnny Capaldi. Yeah. No, never heard of him. Next week, it's blank. <laughs> next week, is blank. Okay. Next uh, week, you're uh, blank. Uh, next week, Jim's suspended for the next four months, so it's just going to be blank. <laughs> Guess we're not going to know what's coming out for the next four months then. And then we I'll have step up. The Long Game, which I've seen probably commercials for every day this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1955, five young Mexican-American caddies, out of the love for the game, were determined to learn how to play, so they created their own golf course in the middle of South Texas desert. Okay. That's Dennis Quaid, Jay Hernandez. Isn't that where they're playing golf this weekend? <laughs> I think that's where. That's where yeah, it's. yeah. The, the Masters are being played at this course. It was yeah, a couple Mexican guys <laughs> created it, right? Exactly. Uh, top five this week, Jeff or Jeff? I still had three more movies. Shut up. <laughs> Give me some top five music. I just want to watch a Jay Hernandez, Dennis Quaid movie. That's all. Who doesn't? Top five. Really whack. No. Top five this week is favorite movies involving outer space. Please never say that again. Thank you. 
Uh, Nick, you got a top five list? I do have a top five list. What's your number five? Number five, I'm going to go with Superman, the original Superman. I guess that takes place with space involved. You you guess? (laughs) Involving outer space. It involved outer space. I mean, I distinctly remember a scene that took place on the moon. (laughs) Didn't he fly backwards in outer space to make the Earth spin the wrong way? Should have put Nuclear Man number four. I I mean, I only put it on there to piss Jason off. Really, (laughs) his his list is going to get more and more Superman central. Can't wait. (laughs) Like, it's not like he picked inner space. (laughs) <laughs> the exact opposite of outer space. Yes. Uh, Brian, number five. Uh, number five for me is uh, titled Survivor, uh, the 2014 Kevin Sorbo. Uh, search for a habitable planet, the last living humans crash land on a barren world inhabited by bloodthirsty aliens and post-apocalyptic warriors. That Kevin Sorbo was just awesome. He should win an Oscar soon. Uh, number five. I'm going to go with the fantastic animated film, Titan A.E. Hey, it's my number four. Uh, Put it on the board. Put it on the board. Uh, My number five is uh, Space Mutiny, which is a horrible show, but I have watched it so many times on uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. It has given me so much joy. Horrible That's show or horrible movie? Horrible movie. Okay. Mystery Science Theater is just hilarious with it. It's my favorite one of all time. Uh, up there with Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell. Uh, so Space Mutiny. Uh, it's with Red Brown, the original Captain America. It is. Yep. Yours? Uh, my number five is Flash Gordon. Flash! Oh, savior of the universe. One of the best soundtracks of all time. That's right. Number four? Uh, my number four. Uh, Are we not going to ask Blake? He'll well, be back. Blake had to leave the room. so He'll we'll, be back. We'll get him when he comes back. My number four is The Martian. Oh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Uh, Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. Lo- lost on a, a planet. Sure, People having to come and save him. That's my son about that one. He hates that film. Oh, that, that, that's one Nothing of Nothing happened. Well, it's about survival. He made potatoes. Yeah, a lot happened. He was stuck alone, and people came and saved him. Kristen Wiig At, saved him. Great. Yeah, Kristen Wiig all by herself. Yep. Uh, uh, the, the Martian is one of those uh, movies that Shawshanks. Yeah. Every time it's on, I, I watch and keep watching it. Uh, my number four is Titan AE. Number four for you. I'm going to go Gattaca. Oh. Awesome film. A horrible film. Awesome film. Uh, number four? Uh, number four for me, uh, the 2016's, uh, the original title was Mind's Eye, but it was uh, later renamed The Black Hole. Uh, sci-fi thriller centered on a high school violinist who witnesses the collapse of space and time. <laughs> Damn. Dean Cain? Dean Cain. Yeah! Yes. <laughs> yes. Love Dean Cain. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell and Dean Cain. Yeah. Uh, number four. The collapse of all space time. That's space and time. Oh. Number four, I hope he'd number four. Mm-hmm. Got Thor Ragnarok oh. and Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumanium, or whatever that one. Quantumania. Yeah, okay. Quantumania. Okay. Uh, number three. Number three. Um, I got a Thor Ragnarok. It's a good one. I didn't forget about Thor Ragnarok. Three, we'll go with Wally. Oh. Where the Earth is currently headed. I've never seen the whole thing like in one sitting, but I've seen enough of it. <laughs> like I got, you know, I think I've probably missed like twenty minutes. I think we're all headed towards somewhere between a cross between Wally and Idiocracy. Yes, we're almost at Idiocracy. Pretty close. So Wally's the better uh, alternative. Pr- the the president is almost. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have electrolytes in the grass in the crops? No, they don't have electrolytes to feed the crops yet. That's where the, pro- the problem is. Yeah, we have not been feeding the crops Brondo. That's right. We've been feeding it water, like out the toilet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> number three for you, Brian. Uh, number three for me is the 2001 Race to Space. Uh, based in it, it's a 1960s uh, film. A young woman works at NASA as an animal trainer responsible for the chimpanzee who will go into space. Hmm. Uh, starring James Woods. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, had a great cast. Number three for you? Number three for me. This is a movie when it first came out, I just thought it was ridiculously horrible. But then I watched it again 
Mm. And I'm like, it's not that bad. And it just kept growing on me. I'm going to go Galaxy Quest. Oh, that's, that's fun. I did not like it when it first came out, but then I, every time I... I guess I was maybe thinking I was taking it too serious. Mm-hmm. But it's it's really funny, actually. It is a good film. I enjoyed it. What's your number three? Uh, it is uh, Interstellar. Ugh. Ugh. We get it. They go into outer space. He finds a black hole. You all are right, black all hole. right, all right. <laughs> number three for you. Uh, number three for me <laughs> is Apollo 13. That's my number one. Oh. Love El Paul. Put it on the board. Yeah. On the board. I get Shawshanked by that Again, one every time. It's another Shawshank. Yep. I didn't like it when it first came out, but every, like Jim has said with his other one, uh, like every time you watch it, I've watched it. It's like, that's oh, what I'm, so yeah, I've, I've liked that one ever since it came out. I yeah. enjoyed it from the beginning. Uh, two. And I met Jim Lovell once. Oh. So that was kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Number two. Oh, wait. Blake's back in the room. Do you, do, do you have your uh, five, through th- uh, five through three available? Five through three, five, uh, Moonraker. Mm. Nice. Uh-huh. Four, Austin Powers, Spy Who Shagged Me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is the moon base. Yeah. Oh, what's that up there? It's a big. <laughs> <laughs> three, uh, Moon. <laughs> Sam Rockwell. Yep. yep. I heard great good. things. I, I saw like that. That's, That's right. Two? And the, Two, uh, I hobied it. Write stuff in Apollo 13. Oh, uh-huh. that was Jeff's three and Jim, or Jason's number one. Yep. Love awesome. Apollo 13. Yep. Put it on the board. There you I, go. You're number two? Uh, let's see. You know, I've got two left, and I'm having a hard time putting them in order here. First one. I will. The uh, first one is Serenity. Ah, oh, Firefly. Oh, yeah. The, the, the movie now. of Firefly, <laughs> yep. uh, the TV show that wraps things oh. up. What could have been? Uh, number two for me was uh, Fifth Element. I really enjoyed Fifth Element, except for the one part. Ruby Rose? Yes. Uh, yeah, I love Fifth Element. Uh, Jim, too? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay. That's a good one. Great books. Uh, Brian, number two. Uh, my number two, we're going to go all the way back to 1980. It's going to be uh, a little film called The Earthling. Damn it. I don't know this one. It's, on my t- it's an honorable mention. Uh, it is. Uh, it features a... Very young Rick Schroeder. <laughs> <laughs> when he was Ricky Schroeder. He was, actually. Did he have a train? Uh, he did not. Oh. And actually, you know what? I don't even really think it's about space now that I look at it. So <laughs> that's even better. Did he hang out with Alfonso Ribeiro? Uh, he did not. Uh, did he moonwalk uh, in the he, movie? He did not. Uh, if he did, on. that would be space related. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't see anything about space in this synopsis. So, I mean, whatever. Nick, number two. All right, number two for me, I'm going to go Spaceballs. <laughs> Spaceballs the flamethrower. <laughs> I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Mm. I don't like that thing. It looks like you're making fun of me. <laughs> Evil will always win. Surrounded by good assholes. is dumb. <laughs> Comb the desert. Uh, we ain't found shit. <laughs> Uh, the one. raspberry. Mm-hmm. Only one man would dare give me the raspberry. And the news pizza the hut died today. He was locked in the back of his limo and ate himself to death. <laughs> or else pizza's gonna take out for you. Uh, Nick, number one. Number one. I uh, hope he did again. Guardians of the Galaxy. One, two, three. Good. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. Very good trilogy. In that order? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, number one. Uh, wrapping my list up, we're going to go to 2008, uh, a film called Outlander. Ooh, sounds like a terrible television show. Right. No, it was actually on a lot of these lists. It but was. it sounds like a terrible television show. Uh, well, that's the name of that uh, terrible Jim television? Caviezel. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not to be confused with the other space movie, Outland. Correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounded Sean Connery. Oh, I thought Outland was a. Uh, is that the one? an opus, uh, a comic strip? Is that the one that the aliens have a crotch in a different area, Blake? That you kept trying to figure. No, out? They had, it's aliens in in karate kung fu. Oh, my bad, yes. my bad. <laughs> okay, that's number one. Yeah, I, I mean, it has everything. It has Vikings and mm. aliens and predators. I mean, what more could you want? Nothing. 
for a list about outer space. Good job. Number one for you. I'm going to go with Rogue One, a Star oh. Wars story. I try to keep Excellent all, choice. I try to keep all the Star Wars off because they're great, but Rogue One's a very good film. Oh, I just chose one of the standalones. Okay. Uh, number one for me was Apollo 13. Jim? Or Jeff? How long have you known us? I don't know. You can't get our, our names nope. right? Nope. Okay, thanks, Doug. No problem. Uh, number one for me for sure. is Solaris. Number one, Blake? Yeah, the list for me was obviously uh, other than Star Wars mm-hmm. related movies and shit. It wasn't for me. Yeah. I like these five movies better than all Star Wars movies. <laughs> and Brian, too. Uh, yes. What What's your number one about? then? Uh, speaking of uh, aliens and kung fu pants, Amazon Women on the Moon. Ah, old school. Arsenio Hall. That's right. That's good. Uh, did, did you have, uh, uh, let's see. Honorable mention something like what uh, morons from outer space. Morons. Yep. No. But um, before we get that, we actually had some listeners. They came. They, they saw. They did a little shopping. Uh, uh, Flesh Gordon was that on your list, Blake? <laughs> no, but Flash Gordon was. <laughs> Emil, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel in space was yeah. though. <laughs> Manuel. <laughs> Emmanuel. Emmanuel in space. In space. Oh, no, I forgot no. that one. Jesus. <laughs> uh, Jacoba. But you know, best, best Jacobo, soundtrack. Flash Jacobo Gordon. at tweets by Jacobo had. Uh, Galaxy Quest, Spaceballs, Space Jam, oh, stop. Ooh. Armageddon, and 2001, A Space Oddity. Oddity. That's Odd- what he had. Odyssey. He put Oddity. Honorable mention, this is a good one, October Sky. Correct? October Sky was good. October Sky was a good film. Uh, Doctor number one had Moonraker, Ventures of Pluto Nash. Oh! <laughs> Leprechaun 4 in Space, oh, that hurts. Wing Commander, and Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Oh, Pluto Nash was so bad. Uh, How bad was it? It it hurt to watch. In no particular order. Well, Ryan- Jay Moore is the best thing in the movie. <laughs> You're in trouble. Ryan L. Terry at R.L. Terry had 2001 Space Odyssey. Star Trek First Contact. It Came From Outer Space. The Thing. I was wondering if someone's going to throw The Thing on. And Forbidden Planet. Uh, Brian Ow, former Our. Canadian of the Year. Had Stargate, Wally, Armageddon, Apollo 13, and The Martian. And he's excluding Star Wars, of course, he said. Okay, Jason, when you pronounce mm-hmm. uh, Brian Auer's name, just pretend it's the time, the unit of time mm-hmm. that's just bigger than a minute. An hour. I don't get it. Uh, Jared Mills it's had, not pronounced, ah, had just, Apollo 13. Just barely bigger than a minute. <laughs> Just a little bit. Life. 60 times bigger than a minute. <laughs> Life, uh, Armageddon, Interstellar, and Event Horizon. And finally, Steve from Everything I Learned from Movies. Everything. Oh, God, I'm afraid for this. <laughs> Space Chimps 2, Zartog Strikes Back, oh. our next ape roll episode. Highlander 2, The Quickening. Oh. <laughs> Alien, Event Horizon, and Aliens. And technically, honorable mention, every movie ever made since we are all in space. What I'm going to say, it, uh, now I found what I was going to say. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you had to throw in that little... Sorry. His, li- his list wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. No, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but something on the list made me think of something. What was, uh, what was in his list again? Zartog. Out of space? Zartog? No, it wasn't Zartog. It was, oh, Highlander, Highlander. Yeah. A lot of people might be thinking... Highlander in outer space? What are you talking about? These are about immortals living on Earth. Yeah, from space. Not in Highlander, Highlander 2. 2. <laughs> or 4. So Highlander 2 is terrible and should be on no one's good list. I'm, that's why I didn't put it on mine. Well, uh, Obviously, you have You had a taste. strong list. Hey, I I did the best I could with it. I, I, it was, mm-hmm. yeah. I uh, deny its existence. Real quick. My list? No, oh. Highlander 2. Okay. Real quick here, uh, go ahead, hit us with your uh, Mad Libs. What is this, Clue? Uh, we're going to do a Dungeons & Dragons one this oh. week. Uh, in honor of us getting the Dungeons & Dragons artwork for yes. the studio from Rusty Shackles. Rusty in the Shackles. Corner, uh, who was uh, a vendor right across from us uh, all weekend. Yep. Uh, super Along nice with guy. Vendor Jordan. Vendor Jordan. But yeah, Rusty was a super nice guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots of fun. So. Yep. Uh, all right, Nick, give me a person in the room. Jason. Oh, no. Blake, give me an adverb. Adverb. I barely knew her. Yeah. Adverb. Strongly. Ends in L-Y. 
Most do, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, gavantingly. <laughs> Is that like Devonte Adams? No, gavantingly. Gav- oh, gav- oh, I'm uh, gavantingly. Okay, uh, Jeff, give me an adjective. Uh, cherished. Oh. Jason, give me a noun. Penis. Of course he went there. Of course. Jim, give me an adjective. Small. <laughs> Nick, give me a noun. Uh, ball. <laughs> Blake, give me an adjective. Red. Jeff, give me a celebrity. Slyvester Stallone. <laughs> or Hogan Hulk. Choose whichever one. Choose which one. I think he's already writing Sly Vester down. Uh, Jason, give me a noun. Uh, blimp. Jim, give me a part of the body. Uh, I will go perineum. God. <laughs> Nick, give me a plural noun. Why do we even hang out with each other? <laughs> plural noun. Boxes. Blake, give me a noun. Person. Oh, that's bland. <laughs> Jeff, Place? give me a number. Thing? Oh, come on, Gronk. <laughs> 69? Who <laughs> is <laughs> 69, Gronk? Jason, give me an adjective. Smelly. Jim, give me a silly word. Blah. <laughs> Can you spell that, that please? B L A A A A A H. Blah. <laughs> All right, Nick. Uh, I need a verb to end this. Ran. So far. All right, wait, wait, would that be run? Because you didn't say past tense. Whichever <laughs> works, Brian. <laughs> I mean. None of this really works. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. This is called the second campaign. Oh, the second mm. campaign. All right. Jason wheezed gauntingly after whacking yet another cherished kobold over the head. How many more <laughs> nice are kobold. there? He asked desperately. How many what? How more. many more are there? He asked desperately. Mm. Terra penis crusher, wounded and small, came down hard on her mighty broad ball <laughs> on another kobold before answering, almost done with him. <laughs> no thanks to that red rogue from across the room, Slyvester Stallone and Hogan Hawk, Forrest <laughs> Keep took down the final kobold with a throwing blimp. Watch your perineum before I cut it off, the elf spat. As the cleric healed Tara's bloody boxes, the elven oh, rogue... Oh, <laughs> oh something's wrong there. The elven rogue kicked open a secret door hidden behind a person. Do you have to heal? It isn't just that time of the month. Stop it. <laughs> Inside the next room, there were 69 more smelly kobolds. <laughs> no, smelly good. fit. Blah, oh, he cried. <laughs> <laughs> we may have bitten off more than we can run. <laughs> or ran. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, watch your perineums, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody cut those off. Titles for the show. A cut off perineum. <laughs> I had uh, Tara's Bloody Boxes. <laughs> no. I, I had Tara's Bloody Boxes and Watch Your Perineums on my list. I had Peep Gag. Uh, Jesus, he woke up. Uh, at this point, you, you don't care. I'm not going to smell that. <laughs> okay, anything else? No, I think I had some Brian right down. Somewhere. Okay, Brian? Uh, or Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff. I have Jesus, he woke up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All it is is a pulley, (laughs) not hot, not gummy, and they're back. If I win again, you can get home. (laughs) Blake wins an EGOT. (laughs) Chauncey has to lick the cover (laughs) and the skin licker, (laughs) along with Watch Your Perineums and Tara's Bloody Box. I do like Chauncey licks the cover. (laughs) Uh, I, as well, have uh, Jesus. He woke up. <laughs> Do you like that one? Uh, I wrote down all it All it is is a pulley for Jim. Uh, let's see. He does have hands. Uh, Ariana, the skin licker. 
Uh, I can't leave it in my mouth that long. <laughs> yeah, I had to write that one down too. Uh, it's too hot in the valley for denim. <laughs> <laughs> No action jeans in the valley. <laughs> it's all it's all geese. It's all geese. <laughs> Is that uh, it? Yeah, that's uh, that's. Let's see. Hang. On. I like Jesus. He woke up, and I do like. It's too hot in the valley for denim. <laughs> all right. And Chauncey has to lick the cover. And Chauncey has to lick the cover. Or Ariana, the skin licker. I do like that. <laughs> Nick, which one you pick? You're the guest. I'm not picking. You pick. Oh, damn it. Blake, do you have a one you prefer? The skin liquor. Okay, Ariana the skin liquor. <laughs> well, I didn't say Ariana the skin liquor. Oh, Chauncey? Just the no. skin liquor. The I, skin I, liquor. I have the skin liquor. Okay, yeah. we're going with it. Uh, we'll be back next week. Nick, thanks for showing up. No problem. I, I do want to say, Jason, I'm yes. I'm kind of disappointed. You've got all these nice framed photos and everything yes. around here, around the room. <laughs> And the most cherished one that you should have framed and hanging on the wall. I haven't got a fi- picture framed is yet. Is shoved in the corner, back behind everything. I, know. I mean, limited edition, <laughs> a one of one. A woman with a boa on a uh, pic- in personalized. A yes, uh, that's not a woman. That's Snake Lady. That is Snake Lady. We do and have by our- boa. He doesn't mean the nope. It's a snake. accessory. I mean, actual snake. Her name is Snake Lady. Is it signed by the Snake Lady? To it's Jason, it will the Snake Lady. It will be framed by the next time you show up. And there's a it hug and a be. kiss. A hug be. and a kiss. How, how do you feel living in the Snake Lady's house, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of scary. Some of the shit I found is <laughs> like that picture. <laughs> That'd be one of them. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Walking dead to talking heads From comic books to TV sets There's a history Not so bad There's the history It's the history of bad So bad The history of bad It's bad the history of bad ideas Oh yes You've been listening to Hobie